Welcome to Starfinder The Fragments of Eternity. It is the 10th of February 2020. I'm Ryan the GM. It is session 42. The meaning of session. Here are the players. Hello. I'm Nico. I'm playing Zora. Best captain. Hello. I'm Alex. I play Nix5, the android mechanic. I'd just like to say well done to the team of Parasite for their Oscars. Yes, I need to watch this movie prompto. Hello, I am Colin, and back in school they never taught us what we needed to know, like how to deal with the spare or someone breaking your heart. For 12 years I've held it all together, but anyway, listen, we don't want Anyway, um... We don't own that. <laughs> we don't own that at all. Anyway, yeah, I haven't seen any films recently, so I need to see those. Um, I'm Ellen, I've been drinking. Hi, how are you? I'm playing Lyco. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Callum, and I'll be playing Zig, the mystical space rat from the sun. You sure are. I, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I've well, also broken my arm, but that's... that's what was it? Stop injuring yourself, team. <laughs> you actually not, broken no, your right. arm. It's How will you roll broken, dice broken. now? <laughs> I just can't move it, so... <laughs> Oh, it's not the same. Oh, uh, right, you're going to have so to just... So actually operating a mouse with my left hand is quite funny. <laughs> you're going to have to put the dice in your mouth. Roll them around and then just spit them out. Spit them out, <laughs> yeah. The way a true Yosoki would do it. Yes. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, dear. You fucking travesty. It's not wrong. I'm just, I'm just very limited in movement with my arm. I am sorry to hear that. What was the cause of this injury? I don't know Excessive if it's unknown. Motivation. Yeah, I was going to say, is this something we want to talk about? On it? I like the unknown. Very, <laughs> very swift answer there, Callum. <laughs> not suspect at all. <laughs> unknown. I unknown. The yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, uh, what do you remember from last time? Shit negotiations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, jump jets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Egg jets. <laughs> yes, true. Uh, I was browsing the internet. Um, <laughs> you were indeed, yeah. <laughs> and I... It was quite giddy with excitement over dragon bones. Also, just for the sake of people who maybe don't listen to our amazing wrap up chats, uh, the additional ending that was added on to the ending oh, of yes. the ending was that Lyco, before heading in back to the palace from the mm -hmm. outside jungleness, he received a forum reply that was just saying, essentially, was it tell me more? And um, yes. Um, yes. signed C. From someone who evidently C -C. had put together that my various. Uh, uh, not quite baiting posts, but my various sort of like a little disseminations of pseudo misinformation um, were from one source and had sort of linked so those back to me. So pseudo misinformation, does that just well, make it information? No, because <laughs> it's deliberately wrong, but it's not completely wrong. Yeah, okay. It's not deceptively wrong. Yeah. The idea is to put out something resembling the truth, but not in a way where it's obvious that the person who is putting it out there actually knows the truth. Yes. Perfect. Uh, mm. And what else do we recall about the session, if anything? I did a, a carving. Carving up the beast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it did very good. well, yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty much... I guess what <clears> point, <throat> even used... I would say massacre, because it was already dead, but you definitely harvested it well, I think, yeah. Yes, it's when you found talent. Mm -hmm. um, the Dragon Butcher. <laughs> the Grim Harvest. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like it was a move. One of the war machine models had at one point. But anyway, yes, so, uh, goals, right? Yes. That, Always believe in yourself. That thing we do. So, to review. Liberate them rats is our main party goal, as is tradition. Uh, Zora, you want to read me your goal? Um, <laughs> um, <let's> see, yeah. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> uh, I think that's me. Uh, get back to the final island, the brief, the crew. And you're happy with that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. It's not get off your ass because the dry queen is bitching, no? Um, so... <laughs> Soon. I'll just laugh here for a bit. Of that, uh, maybe, like... Fucking like jujitsu with the queen. Um, what about yourself, Nix? Are you wanting me to come back to you? Because you seem to be highlighting your own... Okay. 
Right, okay. Forgetting she did that. God damn. I she... parked the burial one for now. Right, okay, yeah. They might come back into play, who knows. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. So I'm read me your new one. Uh, make a massive dragon gun. Okay. Yeah. Hey, make a massive drag gun. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! I like it. The dragon. <laughs> Perfect. The dragon. Yes. Um, la, 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 list la, of bland titles. <laughs> it's a bit too close to Dragula. Um, <laughs> gather information in aid of taking down humanity, by which I mean humanity. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's that. <laughs> I think we've got we've got a source of some weapons. And uh, I think our next thing is like he means me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think our next thing is is to find how we're gonna engineer the circumstances and the opportunity to to take him out to to bring that dragon because this is an RP, right? And if you don't kill a dragon, what the fuck's the point of you? Right. Um. Mm. To become the dragon. Yep. And what if the dragon was the friends we made along? <laughs> Yeah, that was my sentiment there. Uh, <laughs> Zig. Um, with the micro goal of proving to Zig that he's not useless and the crew need him, uh, with the end goal of confronting the captain about rolling crews. Okay, yep. Perfect. Cutting crew. Why is the confront not in the top? Is this... The it should be. It's supposed to be. Um, Comfort. Ah, what have I done? Ah, do ah want, fuck. Do you want me to put it in the Somebody do it. For it? Yeah, Someone else do it. It's, I'm, I'm not working well. Like that? Yeah, that's that's the the curse of the one-handed rat. Um, wow, is this how his hand got injured? Um, the curse <laughs> of the one-handed rat. That was a bit King Crimson, actually. We don't own any of this, and ideally we don't own Colin, so if anybody wishes to purchase Colin, uh, register it. Uh, let us know. Highest level. I cannot be owned. I'm like too M16. good at Twitter. It cannot be owned. You're like a fucking noob player. So you said that. I cannot be owned. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot be fucked. I am unfuckable. I am the one and only. I am the one and only. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I'm still running my Google Drive updater in the background. Let's close that, shall we? Um, right, so. That should improve my connection at least, which is nice. Yeah, we've got goals for the Good, we'll get started then. We'll just jump straight in to... What are you up to, Zig? Um, I can't remember exactly you. where I was. Was I still... You were back <coughs> to the egg, I believe. Yeah. I was talking to the egg. I think he'd... Um, I think at this point, it's it, there's been just like a, a good, solid moment of silence. Mm-hmm. Where he's just been sitting there, and he'll just um. And it is. It's probably. I remember, it's quite warm next to the egg because the the entire yeah. palace is very like, it's cool, like and a kind of, I guess you know what I mean by cave cool because you, spend a lot of time in caves. So, yeah. Yes. I've I do actually. This. Um, <laughs> it's, it's actually true. <laughs> yeah, I figured it out of the the group here. Yes. Not that you're secretly um, a Batman or anything. No, we just we just play around in caves. Pretend to be Batman. Anyway, um, yeah, I think um, you know, having had like he's he's kind of just spilt his soul out to the to the egg, and he's sat there a little bit in silence, um, probably half meditative, half dozing. Yeah, kind of um, cozy up to the egg. Yeah, and I think he'd just get himself up, dust himself off, and just kind of wander, mm -hmm. um, just down a corridor or something, just go aimlessly wander. Yeah. I think that's fine. Yeah, so you start like just wandering a bit. Um you again without any kind of direction in mind, it is mostly just like a, a place that's been abandoned for like mm -hmm. many centuries, right? Um there's parts of it where the cave walls are the, the main walls it's clearly been carved out of cave. There's other parts where it's clearly like precious stone that's been brought in to like adorn the place. Um some of it's like perfect, other parts of it are like cracked and broken with bits of like vines and roots and things coming through it, maybe like fungi over the walls and stuff as well. Um, it just feels like nature has slowly took back some of the the less natural formations. And kind of more you go in. I think as well, maybe there's a part where um, you get to like a dead end at one point and it's essentially just like a bit of broken roofing or ceiling to this place where it's letting like cracks of light in 
um, and the front of the light is obviously heat and dripping from the same cracks into like a kind of pool it seems to be what's formed it came to like a little grotto right uh -huh. um, and you've maybe kind of got to this little quiet secluded place the only kind of sounds the running water that you hear um, mm. so yeah sit down there chill out for a bit I think I think so mm -hmm. yeah yeah what about, probably stick uh, his like, feet in the water yeah and like it's probably quite like it's probably quite I don't know if you would feel warm or cold at this point really based on how Zig normally feels but the water would be like fresh cold right so mm, yes yeah um, but the room itself might be a bit warm because the actual sunlight getting into it uh, but yeah so going back to Lycle who would have been the official last shot of the uh, the session from before mm. I... Desolation Row starts to play. <laughs> yeah. Or just I walk a lonely road. <laughs> um, yes. And you're heading I back would... inside. Do you continue back inside or do you stay outside given... I think I'll stop and... <sighs> I think I want to reiterate wanna... the feeling of Lyco did have some caution, comma, paranoia based on sharing information about his present position. Oh no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Not to flame the position would... now, just to remind you of what was discussed before, of course. Uh, what I would have um, probably done, though, I, I, I suspect he would be intrigued, so I'm not saying he threw caution to win by any means, but I think he would want to see, you know, for instance, where he could perhaps go to meet with this. Like, for instance... Uh, I say, say, I, say I were to respond to them saying, yes, let us discuss. I would certainly not be inviting them here. Of course. Uh, yeah. In that case, I think he will have a sort of quick search to see if there's anywhere he could perhaps get to. Uh, obviously, he has a, has a pretty good idea on where he is now. Or at least... Yeah, like, a rough again, idea. you have a very strong assumption of where you should be based on your kind of like cross-reference. Because yeah. it was the... Well, Nature reserve, basically. Yeah, it's basically that kind of cordoned off island of uh, preservation. Yeah. Or a preserved so, island. Yeah. I would, I would, uh, I would look into where perhaps I could, I could easily get to from here, mm -hmm. knowing that we sort of have limited transport, at uh, least so it seems. Um, <laughs> yes, significantly limited, based on you have seen no forms of transport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the only thing that was mentioned transport-wise is obviously the vault door opened up here, right? So that was obviously... That made sense because it was her vault, right? Um, the other thing she mentioned was the, the elven gates that would have went to Galarian. <coughs> yeah, and that's true. And obviously we're like... Well, not really, yeah. Yeah, it's not the yeah. best plan. Like, every uh, you hold your okay, breath. In that case, I don't, I don't... Yeah, thinking about it, I definitely... I mean, what we're going to see, like, can't and you know jump. she's held her word to the like so far, and she did say she will deliver you to Akaton because that's what you've asked her to do as part of the arrangement. Mm -hmm. So you know you've got that in the bag, assuming you trust her. I will. Uh, I will not reply for now. In that case, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll sort of put that to the back of my mind for a moment because I think in, I know what he's going to do, which is just for the sake of putting it out there for the party, is look into what the Elf Queen could do. Excuse me. In terms of transporting us about within the planet, mm -hmm. um, and if it's ah, I have many boats. I'm just going to assume they've rotted away. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Several dinosaurs uh, are wearing them as fetching hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, depending on what the answer is, you know, maybe we'll go. Okay, we can meet. If not, perhaps I will continue communication with this person online. But I'm not going to respond at the moment simply because I don't really want to give much more information to them. Maybe yeah, plus you might be like processing it as Lyco as well, going, okay, how do I want to approach this? What can mm. I do to make the most or utilize this? Part of what you'll be thinking is like triangulation. Like you'll, you'll see this person obviously is connected to these different posts. So presumably they know the IP or the space IP mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, yep, and so maybe... They've looked at this and noticed that I'm in the middle of a, you know, untold centuries abandoned mm -hmm. palace in a nature reserve. If they even know that's there, which they might well not, mm -hmm. they'll go, 
no one's actually there. This is this is probably like a, a VPN or some sort, mm-hmm. a space VPN, of course. Of course. Um, and they might think, right? Well, I'll try and bait out some more responses, and with that information, maybe I can figure out where the actual. Uh, you know, who knows what this person's intentions are? So I don't want to just give them Plus, away. Plus, it gives you time to then like go. Do I then loop in the crew, or do I keep this to myself for now? Yeah, exactly. Gives, like, like, that pro- like processing space. Yeah, I think that's mm-hmm. good. So, so I, I will return to the. And where do you go? Like you head in, and obviously, where you were aware, like Zig had fallen and laid by the egg. I don't know. I think you just headed out, and he I was, was aware that Zig had sort of come out of the chamber we were in, miles and miles below. Yeah, like in the I... dank depths. But that's about. Yeah, because I think you'd left before Zig planked himself next to the the egg. Oh, so, so it was a nice touch to give us a dungeon with the dragon. Um, <laughs> I know, right? How how crazy of me, right? A dungeon at the dragon. Um, Thanks so, for noticing. So I think I don't think I'll have really have a clue where he'd actually be right now. So I'll just go back and say, generally, oh, man, dragon in the dungeon what. should have been that session title. Damn. <laughs> where were you several sessions ago, Colin? Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, here. so you head in. And you maybe look at the egg, and maybe you were expecting to see Zig there, even though you'd left beforehand. You maybe you just assumed, yeah, Zig will be in this room. And yeah. Obviously, you don't see him. I, I assume you just carry on back into like the main big huge chamber hall. Yeah, sure. Where is it you're going? Are you going to head back downstairs, or like what's the plan? Well, my plan really was to go in and see who I found. Yeah. Um. Given how much time has probably passed, because you were probably outside for a good couple hours, I'd say. Given how long the captain's trashed negotiations with uh, the queen, I fucking I That fixes it, right? Look, it fixes. Um, I die. Um, yeah. So, Nix, did you just stay downstairs, basically harvesting constantly? Because it will take. It's maybe going to take a day to get everything you want from this, but obviously you've made huge amounts of progress in terms of your ability to harvest it so you could update the crew on that factor or you could just stay and work away i think i know the answer but yeah i could update them you're right <laughs> it's completely within uh, my capabilities correct <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i mean the communications aren't working yeah are they and uh, uh, the you, you can reach up. zig's communicator yep we yeah. established that one yep which is not helpful because it's in my pocket yes correct um mm-hmm. Yeah, and given that the alternative is walking back up those stairs and yeah. probably entering the room with the Drow Queen talking to Zora. Now keep in mind, you'd hit, you'd enter up into like the main chamber hall, which is like a big empty, like giant hallway essentially, like a welcoming hall. And then the if you imagine like a big rectangle, uh, you came mm-hmm. in from the vault at the the forefront of the rectangle. And then the far side is the doors, the stairs up to the second level, and the doors that led back into like the dining hall slash conference room that you are in, that had the secret mm-hmm. exit out to the jungle. Um, in the main entrance hall as well, to like the the right hand side, are the doors that went all the way down into the depths where you are currently. Um, and then behind where that portal would have opened is the doors that led to like her her bed chamber, and that's where Zora's mm-hmm. are way down that way, about twenty minutes. Okay. Not that I'd think that I would know that. Yeah, and I doubt just, you'd know that part, yeah. I think you just know yeah. the, the rough layout above. And going upstairs potentially would invite conversation that he is probably <laughs> yeah. not in the mood for. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, if you want to stick downstairs and carry on. Do you want to give me some engineering checks then? Do you want to give me... Give me Fried wait, was it engineering we were using? It was, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, pretty sure. If, even if Whether it wasn't, the... why not? Like, give me two engineering checks for me, please, and we'll just see how you... Engineering is what I do best. Okay. It's what I live for. Perfect. There you go. So maybe the first one is the representation of you going, right, okay, I'm making good progress on this. I kind of know what I'm doing. Do I carry on? Do I, do I try and make mm-hmm. something out of it? And then you're looking at the equipment you have, which is pretty much cutting tools, right? And mm-hmm. your, your toolkit that is not really designed to build weapons, quite frankly. Yeah. Because you've basically got a pile of bones, so you're thinking, maybe I can't do much with my engineering check of a 23, but maybe my 34 is going to let me keep harvesting um, to the point yeah, where you're going to max. And you're going to be able to, like, you're going to harvest in a way that you're going to maximize your like cube of space that you've got for your mm-hmm. uh, 
You're it's just one dense game. block of bone. Yeah, literally it's the, the Tetris <laughs> game that you're playing. <laughs> oh dear, and if we owned the rights to the Tetris tune, we could play that here now, but we don't. So I mean, <laughs> it's an old Russian it's folk very, song, we can do it. Old, I know, right, very, very so. old. Um, so everybody just imagine that, or find it on YouTube and play it now, five minutes ago. Thank you. Um, Please stop the recording and play it. Yep. I... And now you're back with us. Yep. Um, Welcome you. back. back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, thank you for imagining that little podcast. soliloquy. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But anyway, so you're you're still downstairs. So I think, Lyco, you come in the egg room, and I guess it's the egg and corpse room currently, is yeah devoid of people, um, or void of people. Devoid is a weird statement. And then you head into the main chamber hall, and maybe you hear like a a distant thud in the background. It comes away from the far end where the you know the queen was walking down because you spoke to her for a bit. Um, so further down that hallway where the queen was headed, you hear like a thud of something heavy being okay. knocked over. Um, but you don't see anyone. Um, and your comm signal, you could probably connect to Zora if you tried. But you still wouldn't be able to connect to anyone outside or down below. Um. Hmm. I, I think I'll go and investigate. He says, <laughs> <laughs> knowing how that tends to end up. All right. Yeah. So you want to head off down the the corridor towards the way the drug queen exited. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. All right. Two. Uh, two seconds. I need to mute another channel that's updating frequently. Uh, please just mute for the next. Yeah. We go. Perfect. So yeah. The you head down that way and yeah, like. Let's switch perspective as you follow that way and we'll cut to inside the room where Zora is with the Drow Queen and you're on your ass. I would eye roll. I would... They scream. Lyco doesn't hear this. I would stand up. I would brush myself off. I think when you go to stand up, she does offer a hand. Ah, uh, I would take it. But it's in that kind of, you know, very dainty lady style you would you know, she's showing you, like, the back of her palm. Okay. Do you um, go to, like, take her hand and... I, I guess I still would. Yeah, and, like, as you do, like, she grips and she has a good grip on her as well. Um, impressive for a non-vesque. And uh, she helps, like, hoist you up. But obviously, you can maybe tell from the tiniest crack in her exterior, she didn't expect you to be as, like... You're a big guy. So, lifting you up, maybe it took that wee bit of extra, oh god, this is heavier than I thought it was going to be. You know, like, she's trying to show strength, right? Because she's kind of got that you're a predator, and you appreciate strength. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, everything, uh, let me just replay the last couple of sessions where you talked about how Vesk are predators. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> but, that's cheating. She smirks, she punches you in the shoulder, and she says, it's winning, and she walks past you. Uh, her, her ripped dress, like, trailing behind her. <laughs> right, so... We'll call that uh, an agreement, I suppose, then. <laughs> and you can see she's walked over to, like, uh, like a side kind of uh, desk that she opens up and it, and she like pulls it all open. It's like a really intricate piece of like carpentry where she pulls it open and it all kind of like expands almost like petals opening up and it's like a drinks cabinet and she, you, you see her starting to like pick up bottles and uh, tipping them upside down because they're all like long since dried up and gone. Um, and then she just starts like dropping bottles. So like as you start approaching a room, uh, you can hear like <clears throat> voices okay. that are muted and smashing of glass. Uh I don't think I took my rifle with me, so I have nothing <laughs> I have a gun to raise. I was gonna say I have no weapons. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I, I I will approach with caution. I think it's reasonable to say you get a pistol on you at least. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, sure. I w in that case I will draw it. Yeah, because I mean, you've you've mentioned many times you generally have pistols on you, so it's unusual for him to be without, you know, yeah, a weapon. Yeah. yeah, 
Um, I have a pistol on you. So I think, yeah, th thank you. I, I will, uh, <laughs> don't I need it? It's probably a bad idea to say I have it. But yes, I probably do. So uh, I will approach the room mm -hmm. cautiously and uh, I'll attempt to listen in. Yeah. Uh, Zora, what are you saying to the queen that's just smashing bottles now? Um, and it's not like she's just... grabbing them and saying another. It's just literally she's looking at them, tipping them upside down, and just dropping them out of her way. Even though she's barefoot. Um, seems the pantry's dried up a little. <laughs> and then she, she laughs like once, and she says, are you that out of practice? And then continues raking through her drinks cabinet. Uh -huh. I hate this <laughs> queenly manner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I would just be like arms folded, just watching. Yeah, and I think um, yeah, that's pretty much what you hear, crawling through the wall. Uh, the in that case, I will uh, invite myself into the room and then store my weapon. Uh, so you walk in? Oh, yeah. Yes. God. And I think that like catches her attention where she kind of like pivots on the spot and her dress like tangles in her leg because obviously half of it's ripped off when she tore it to get more flexible. Yeah. And uh, so you walk in, you see Zora like. I don't even know if out of breath makes sense, but maybe like still. I don't want to say winded because it makes it sound like it was way more effort than before, but he was caught off guard by the flip. So a little flustered, maybe. Yeah, like I think the equivalent of whenever you've seen the captain, maybe <clears throat> I don't know, caught off guard, right? I, I think Lyco would have noticed this out of anyone in the crew. It would have been Lyco that would have noticed the slight changes in Zora, um, if there was a caught off guard Zora, and uh, the shocked emoji one. You kind of you spot that Zora is like, oh god, real instant relief seeing you, being like. So this was an awkward situation you've assessed, and you see the fact that her dress is ripped and there's broken glass <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> How does uh, Lyco like... interpret this situation? You know, Lyco is uh, not going to jump to any sort of conclusions that you seem to be getting. Do you <laughs> want to roll sense motive to justify you, jumping If you to... want me to roll this, it's... I shall roll it thoroughly. Uh, let me just get to the thing, because I don't have Lyco open. Right. Oh fuck! God. Why is that a pop out? I don't want it to be a pop out. There we go. Sense motif. Oh, that's not a good roll for me. Hello. I'm here. Yeah. Hello. So yeah. we got eighteen. I've had a roll. Yeah, I think um, you don't actually know what's going on, right? Like no, like there's no strong sense of oh god, this is a bad, awkward situation. What the hell's been happening between these two? in that kind of wink wink nudge nudge kind of way or this is yeah. aggressive or awkward like I think the only thing you know is something's happened you've walked in on and you don't really know what yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. and if you want to jump to a conclusion feel free to that's on you I uh no I think he'll see uh he'll, he'll uh clear his throat <laughs> you know what <clears throat> uh captain uh your uh, your Majesty, I uh, apologize for interrupting um, this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I heard I I heard uh, uh, some uh, some concerning noises, and I thought I'd investigate. And she just looks you up and down, and she kind of looks disappointed. Not in you, but like in general, she looked disappointed. And then she starts looking you up and down. And she says, Have you been exploring the palace? I went outside for a time in order to. She kind of like. She already looks disappointed in the answer. And then she kind of like starts clinking more things out of the way from the, the cabinet behind her. And she turns around to try and rake through it again. And she says, Does nothing last? And then she just sounds more disappointed and she starts digging through it. Uh, ultimately, I believe the answer is uh, more or less a no on that, but shrugs. Yeah, and she just kind of like slumps forward, like she's kind of given in, raking through it like over the 
the kind of fancy petal desk thing that she's opened up. And she kind of turns and she says, Well, would you like to explain the arrangement with your... She looks at you and goes, Do you want underling? Is underling derogatory? <sighs> and she's, um, she's addressing that to you, Lyco. I, I prefer to think of myself as a uh, crewman or staff. Um, she smiles and she goes, Good. Pride in your work. Yes, you. And she points at you, Zora. <laughs> like, explain it. I'm going to look for a drink. And she, um, like, just walks through the gla the broken glass and then just, like, walks past <coughs> you, like, oh. she did, When she's walking past you, she puts, like, a hand on your shoulder when she's about to, like, bump you. And she literally just, like, slowly moves you away. And that kind of, <laughs> I'm about to walk past you and I don't intend to shoulder check you, I'm just going to move you out of my way. Uh, Which, I mean, if you want, you can roll culture, but it's not really that hard to tell that her actually making physical contact with you already implies she is on a much more intimate level with you in general. I mean, I, I would, I think I would, yeah, yeah. she's a monarch, right? That's, a, that's mm -hmm. something that I would do really. Yeah, because she would stand there till you moved out of her way, right? And then would go through... If there I, I, I respond with a fairly neutral smile and allow myself to be shifted. Yeah, and uh, she just walks away. Maybe there's a slight crunching of the little bits of glass coming off the bottom of her feet. <laughs> I raise an eyebrow because I have uh, human anatomy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Captain? <laughs> um, Mostly. <laughs> so... I guess I've uh, invited the the Queen here onto the ship for a while. Um, in exchange, she'll help us out with that mess downstairs and perhaps it might lead to something more later. Is the long and short of it. Um, okay, I will... Uh... I'll. He's he's looking around the floor. <laughs> yeah, it's just like broken glass, right? Near her like cabinet thing. It's a huge room, right? It is an absolutely huge room that you're in. There is her bed, big four poster kind of like twisted white stone thing, and like her little seating area up to like the front left of the room, front right of the room, sorry, and over at the left hand side is where she was at her bar. And the. Sort of like, just as if drawn back by the sight of that to the initial sounds that had drawn me in, I would. Uh. So, were, were you fighting earlier? I like the stutter on <laughs> foot item. <laughs> um. Not quite, just teaching the Queen about this handshake. <laughs> so it's a terrible <laughs> no what, he said that in the most straight face manner possible yeah. I can't keep it with a straight face I, <laughs> it's a big, big fucking uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, fair enough I, I he's, imagine he's, he said it as innocent as he a very uh, straight face when he wants to um um I, I think I think he'll be briefly perplexed, but we'll just choose to move on. <laughs> For the sake uh, of the Commonwealth, that's appreciated. And she's... Oh, what? To what end would she be joining us, Captain? My understanding was that she wanted to reclaim her... <laughs> reclaim her throne here. Well... I raised the problem of, um, well, most of our contacts and everyone else that she knows. We'll be gone. You know. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I raised, um, maybe introducing her to new ones. I see. 
and we would be her ambassadors, I suppose. <sighs> um, well, what would it be like the name of people transporting someone? I mean, <laughs> you mean like her, her caravan? Yeah, I was her, say, reten her, her retinue, her palanquin. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the palanquin's a great name for a ship, actually, a royal ship. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. More like a not an escort, but not an escort, like envoy, right? And away. Yeah. It, okay. Uh, More uh, like sort of like a envoy. Charity, <laughs> if you will. Oh, <laughs> I um. Yeah. So yeah, I suppose I, th I think you sort of just give him a sort of very brief squint. Nod. Um, Squinod. <laughs> I think that's a. I think that's a. Oh god. They made fun of it. Squinod. Anyway, um, <laughs> Squid. I will. I will. <laughs> Squid was someone's nickname, used to know. Um, I will. Uh, I, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I suppose I, I'll, I'll inform the captain um, of my activities. Um, let's not go over specifics, but I'll say something to effective. Captain, I took the opportunity to uh, pop up to the top side while I was here and, and uh, assess our, 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 our current situation in terms of uh, communications and and transport it, it appears we're on uh, a mostly disused island which largely serves as a scratches his neck somewhat guilty looking wildlife reserve uh <laughs> flashbacks <clears throat> to the murder death scene outside uh, when he's arrived uh, which uh you know obviously not ideal but it does afford us a degree of privacy uh, it may make transport around this planet difficult um, should we have need to visit other parts uh, I, I suppose her first port of call may be other places within this world but yeah, shrugs like, like the, the Lashunta capital the is um like a massive metropolis, right? Um, so that would be what you would consider the main port of call here. They have like the main space station and such. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the city specifically, but it's not like specifically important. But it is just essentially huge. And just similar to the way that Versys is super advanced, but Versys is advanced in cybernetics primarily. Um, like Castrovel's like psionics, right? Um, they're super advanced in psionics and kind of in general they're just a, it's a really fucking advanced planet quite frankly um, there is like capital kind of, is L is that right <laughs> is that I, I just I, did, I run a quick google Castle. elf's capital is L certainly apparently. that might be from Galarian's like time though uh, Castrovel let's see let's see Castrovel Starfinder Let's have a look at what we've got. Well, the city states. But it's not really clear there is a cap. Nah, like most of the industry from the like the shipyards and such is on the moon. Uh, one of the moons which is called Elindre. Uh, it's got no atmosphere and it's pretty much where all the kind of pollution is there because it doesn't have an effect on Castrovel because they were smart enough to put it all on their moon. Um, yeah, although that requires being able to go to the moon before your industrial revolution, which is quite impressive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, considering that you had elves on that planet, could get between Galarian and Castro Valley. Anyway. Yeah, that is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, Magic. Pretty much. 
Yep. I, I don't think it's listed here. Um, Magic. It, it helps. So. Uh, no, no cities listed here, so it doesn't have a name until we need it to have a name for legal reasons. So, yeah. Just the Lashanta capital, or metropolis, I guess. It's called um, metropolis. There you go. Nobody's using that. Uh, at least it's generic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> having uh, having said all that, I suppose so. Just ask the captain what his, uh, you know, what are what is our <sighs> um, current objective? Yeah, well, I certain that's kind of all over the place, but I'm not quite sure. I I want I want to ask him like, what's our current standing? Where are we going? Are we remaining here? And it's like. You know what? That's yeah. Something something that I can tell like, mm, Sorry, having trouble getting the right words today. Okay, What's our intention? Can help. Yeah. Well, no. I th I'll, I'll just. I prefer doing it in character if at all possible. So, you know, what's our what's our next move, Captain? Are we are we remaining here for the time being? Because we need to we we'll need to gather some. And I think at this point as well, it does like post. sink in for Lyco that that like. The main like reception hall would be big enough to like fit a ship into it, if you had to. Yeah, he's probably looking around, sort of behind him, like just over his shoulder, like get looking back and getting a sense of how big the place is. Yeah, because it was a, it was a good twenty minute walk down this corridor as well to get to these rooms. So it's yeah, it's a very substantial mm -hmm. ruin. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean the palace itself. You've only seen bits of it because most of it's probably shut off because of the like decay. Um, potentially seismic activity. Who knows what's happened here? But yeah, like it's it's vast. Yeah. So, okay. Um. Well, first of all, we deal with the the bones. That's well. I don't know how long that's going to take. It's not exactly mad. Uh, expertise. Nor mine, Captain. <laughs> Your um, arms twinge ever so slightly. Those <laughs> are <laughs> not organic, but you know. There is they are organic sense. as we need to be. Yeah. yeah. Necro organic. Then, yeah, there you go. I reckon in the meantime we try and gather some supplies and hopefully you can still get us the Akaton somehow that we turn towards the Queen. Queen's long gone, man. She yeah, left she's looking, oh, for, she left. She left looking oh. for a drink. Well, what I'll say then is hopefully That's the Queen can still withhold the side of the bargain and get us to Akaton. I don't believe she would have... I don't believe she would have suggested it if she thought her out with her abilities, but on the other hand, I don't think she was quite... Was, um, I don't think she was quite aware how long had passed. Uh... I don't really know how how mortal she is. Uh, she may. It's a very good question. Yeah. She may not think of time even in, in the same terms that we do, uh, regardless of whether or not she knew. But I suspect that her means of transport will be magical or mystic, whatever. I would nod. Um, I've got to assume so. Um, but who knows? Maybe they had spaceships back then. <laughs> I would uh, I got the impression that if there were any, they were not something common to her people. Yeah. She talked of them mm, almost as if they were a new idea to her. Yeah, her translation for it was star vessels. Um, <clears throat> okay. If we leave, we leave to Akaton. Yes, that's still the plan. Um, it seems like the best place that we could maybe find a way to get in touch with the ship, or perhaps get a way to get to the ship. Uh, can you roll culture for me, Zora? Uh, okay. Cause I probably don't know that. It's more well, that I want to know if you would know something else. 
about the layout of those two, specifically between Castroval and Akaton. Culture you, check. I mean, like, you, you, you were a diplomat <laughs> for, for, for quite a while. Um, right. Getting a message to the ship would be easier on Castroval than it would be on Akaton. Be easier on Castroval? Yes. Okay. It would be. Here's the, the key information. It would be less traceable if you janked the fucker together on Akaton. But you'd have to build everything yourself on Akaton. Or use somebody else's jury rigged antenna. But on Castro Valley, uh, you could just do it by like connecting up to their network and requesting like one of their many satellites to just calm the ship. Did they like <laughs> super secret? That's, that's for Zora to care about. That's just what I wanted you to roll that culture for me for. Because you would know that. Okay. Having like probably assessed the capabilities of each planet, you're charged with gathering intel on, right? So. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm. Or we could try and get in contact from here, but there's the obvious problems about going through official channels. Well, we do have a degree of isolation working on our advantage there. Uh, if if people ask questions, we can always come up with some excuse about... Hmm. I'm not sure. Something about gateways. We, we, we can think about it. Get Zeke to make up something sufficiently mystic sounding and... and, and uh, but I don't know how much would be asked if we knew what we were doing and uh, with a little research I think between myself and Nix5 we can probably piece the normal procedures together pretty nicely and, and, and request things in a way that won't arouse suspicion. The only thing that would arouse suspicion at all would be our location and, and if that does lead to any questions you know, the simple answer is we ended up here through some sort of transportation accident um, or just to scowl at them, perhaps, and say that's above their clearance. I don't know. That well, doesn't love, always though, right? work. Let's say you were captured leaving this island for whatever reason you were just discovered, right? In the hypothetical situation where the Castroville authorities were like, why are you on this uh, preservation site? And then they check Nick's Five's bag. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Which I love the concept of. It's like, can you open this extra dimensional space for us, please? And then like, <laughs> all these bones fall <laughs> from like, brought these with me. Yeah, it's like, oh, these are my own bones. I have a very <laughs> large dog at home. <laughs> um, it's called Rex. <laughs> oh, uh, so yeah, how appropriate, King. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I say, uh, I, I say something like to effect. No, we can. We can probably cover up pretty nicely going here. Uh, the, qu the question is, Captain, who in particular are we interested in hiding from at the moment? I mean, I'm not particularly eager to broadcast our location to anyone who might be paying attention, but... Can I suggest at this point for you to do you maybe want to like start wandering down to see how Nix is getting on? Because then we can loop the three of you at least into the same conversation. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just as like a narrative like, like swoosh... Um, it's, uh, yeah, at some point during the conversation, I'd probably just give the whole like, finger and start walking, you know, like... Yeah, just point yeah. on through the doorway sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, um, can I ask as well then, right, so we'll cut to, like, you nodding and talking and having that, like, you start to head down towards Nix. I'll come back to you in a second. Zig, what are you doing? Because you've been kind of sat with your feet in this kind of, like, water for a, I I think, know, a while. Yeah? Yeah, um, I think a good while, anyway. Um... He's just kind of been sitting there, splishing around, kind of thinking of nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think after, after you know, X amount of time, uh, some some time, and indes indescribable amount of time anyway, he would get up. <laughs> but you just described and, it. Yes. Yes, um, but He'd poor... get up and just, um, he'd indescribably stand up. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> um, I think he would just kind of walk back, like kind of, 
um, you know, brushing his hand against the wall and stuff and kind of imagining what the place would have looked like in the past and kind of just making up, you know. Yeah, kind of like almost daydreaming as, as, a bit. Yeah. Um, trying to create in his head the sort of like what what the, the place used to look like back in its like grand days um, okay. as it kind of progressed more into the actual castly bit as opposed to the cave type bit. Roll a will save. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> 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 Nothing ever came from it. Uh, where's Will? Ah, there he is. Where's Will? Will's right there. So, you you start walking back. You start daydreaming. You put like your hand on the wall and kind of like let your kind of like hand kind of like feel the grooves and twists and breaks in the wall. Yeah. And uh, you, as you're walking forward, see the place start to distort. What do you instinctively do? And by distort, I mean you're looking at it. And it's almost like your vision goes slightly blurry, and then the place seems brighter further on. Uh, you've still got that cool dripping noise from behind you. Um, you start to get a bit nauseous, like that part where, like you know, you go to take an extra step, but there's like two extra steps, and you go that bit further. You know, even though yeah. there's actually only one extra step, and your brain just tricked you. So yes, you meet the ground quicker. Like um, your brain starts tricking you that way. Um, but it feels like a, a knee-jerk reaction, so you've got like, you can react to this, you could like maybe buy into it, you could pull back from it. I think Zig would uh, initially try to kind of take like a, as he takes that like kind of like, you know, that, that knee-jerking like step forward, where there's a step there that isn't there, mm -hmm. or the other way around. Um, yeah. He would kind of take trying to like jump back a little bit, um, yeah. and kind of just catch his breath a little bit and try and refocus. Yeah, and the moment you do, like there's, you've you've shaken whatever it was off. It was like very fleeting. Um, mm -hmm. Can you roll like a perception for me of some kind? Sure, mysticism um, would also yeah. be valid. Oh wait, which one's better? Ah, they're both the same. Boof! Right. The wall you're leaning on wasn't as broken a moment ago as it now is. Dum -dum. Um, I think... And you don't remember probably kind of... if it was that broken before the If it show. was that broken, yeah. I think he would kind of feel, like, just put his hand across it and kind of Feel it and kind of just kind of brush it off as no, oh, no, it must have been like that. I'm just making stuff up. I'm just spooked by the the dark cave. <laughs> yeah, right. It is like, thing, yeah. and you probably need to be like, there's a lot of that Zig needs to unpack, right? Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's fair. I think he would like his his brain would go back to like kind of retracing like his his steps in his head, going, you know, well, I went to the pool, blah 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 blah. That was quite relaxing, and then you'd kind of trying to take himself back into that state and just keep keep kind of moseying along. So when you say back into that state, do you mean back into his like not thinking about anything state or back into that weird nausea state? No, not thinking about anything state. Okay, cool. That was a very important I don't, thing. I, I don't think anyone would actively choose to <laughs> I mean, to go Zig's back a strange to... lad. <laughs> this is true, this is true. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think as you're heading like back uh, towards like the kind of the main hall thing from the random like corridors that you've you've taken, you hear Zora and Lyco speaking, I guess, as they're about to like head towards the tunnel entrance, like the kind of dungeon entrance. Sorry. Um, I think he would just kind of follow their voices. Um, yeah, no, at, like, like a you, slightly you walk, quicker you, pace. You walk into the the main hall, and you can definitely see them about to like walk down into the dungeon. So they've probably not spotted you, but. Yeah, you could catch their attention by shouting at them. You could just follow on with them. It's up to you. I think I think you'd just follow on for now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, what's the conversation on the way down? Cause remember, it's like an hour journey down. Unless you're gonna try oh. some crazy hugging Lyco and jump jetting your way down. <laughs> Let's go, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Never let go. Uh, um. Well, what we speak about last night, I can't remember. Pretty much um, next steps, right? And who do we want 
to hide from. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. So I, I would kind of like when he was he was speaking about how they could probably like trace stuff and like it'd probably be all right for them to get rid of that. Like, well, maybe we can run it by next quickly and see he thinks. But I mean, if it's easier to get communicate for here, then well, the better we get on the ship. The, the quicker that we get on the ship, the better. That's good. That's better English right there. <laughs> Vest English is difficult. Yes. Um, yeah, I suppose moving quickly is probably the best thing, but... Yeah, if, that, if there's nothing to speak about, we can just skip to the part where you're like, entering the chamber. Again. Sure, the, yeah, like, I think awesome. yeah. So, I think like, you just head in and you just head down to like the like the entrance where you don't just obviously stare at the, the edge, unless you talk above it down to Nyx, or if you head down. Because I think by the time you get there, you probably see that like Nix has had at least another like, what's this? Maybe four hours total now to like hack at this thing. Maybe three hours. Yeah, four hours I think total, hacking at this. Um, mm -hmm. Not bad. So yeah, he's the thing's probably in just <laughs> various sections. Even if there's big chunks of it, like the tail's been disconnected from like the ribcage part, and it's all in its own little segments. And now he's obviously tearing apart each individual part of the sections. So he's he's doing good. In fact, you can set the scene maybe better than I can, Nix5. What what do they walk into? I uh, imagine Nix is... You know how like mechanics have a trolley that they lay on under a uh, car? Yeah, they're a little... He's basically trolley. doing that in the ribcage of the dragon. So that when he... Uh, um, obviously not with wheels, probably, mm -hmm. of course, but... I mean, his power armor is probably pretty handy for... Most of his movement needs. Mm -hmm. He sort of, yeah, just mechanically drags himself out and looks over to them as they come in. Yeah, and like, you're walking into like the main kind of Colosseum floor, as it were, mm -hmm. coming down the, the entrance way into that. Uh, and you just see him <laughs> emerge from a bone cage. <laughs> Having fun. Uh, being productive, Captain. Hmm. Not. I would have chuckled at that in in character. <laughs> in meta, I laugh given Zora's <laughs> <laughs> interactions. Not meta. Oh, I just, I would no, I'm saying them. I would laugh at meta. <laughs> I would grunt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Queen's got to be joining us for a little while. Wait, what? And then, yeah, from behind you guys, she's probably just here is Zig. I kind of like jump up, actually. <laughs> it's, like a, it's, like, it's like a parent tiger when its cub appears behind it. <laughs> God blast it, Medkit! <laughs> God damn it, Medkit! <laughs> There we go. <laughs> oh dear, so good. Yeah, so like Zig's like, what? Um. Uh, uh, in exchange for helping us out with this mess and stuff, I've let her have access to the ship until. Well, I introduce her to some people that she might be interested in. God, it's so vague. Yeah. Uh, How does the crew hmm. react to the captain's new arrangement? I feel it's gotten less specific than when you told me, Captain. Ah, <sighs> this. Well, you've had to dance about the same question with the Queen for like, I've like, I look at the time and see how long I was actually in that room for. Uh, felt yeah. like ages. Yeah, it probably did feel like ages to be honest as well. Like, I don't, I don't think it was that long. It was maybe half an hour all in, really, for you in the room. But like, getting in and out of the, like, just moving around the palace takes time, right? The place is huge. Also, uh, this is the only floor she opened up, in terms of. When she descended, it wasn't the only door. It was just the only one she opened. 
um, which was like pretty much at the bottom of that stairwell, which mm. took an hour to get down. So you can imagine there's probably a fuck ton of rooms in this, or floors at least. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's a, it's a huge place. Hmm. But yeah, like I was questioning this best. But yeah, little... yeah. But yeah, I would say when you've danced around the same question for the past like half an hour with the Queen, it gets kind of annoying repeating it. <laughs> um... Is there any follow up from Zig then? Because obviously Zig's like, "What to the Queen's going to follow on?" So. Yeah, I think I think at that really, um, Zig would irradiate. Kind of feel <laughs> irradiate. <laughs> yes. I'm the captain um, now. I'm the captain. Um, I think Zig would definitely feel that's kind of affirming his, like, ah, clearly, they they just like, well, obviously, I'm not important enough to share anything with. Oh no! Oh, so. <laughs> oh no! Or Ziggy Boo. Um. <laughs> So I don't think he would like actually respond to that. He'd just kind of go, hmm, okay, and kind of go up to the, the, the dragon skeleton and kind of look at it and see what Nyx is doing. And yeah, stuff. and I think like, maybe you head up and it's like, maybe it's the actual like skull of the skeleton that like, you stare at, and it is like huge. I think he's like nose to nose with it. <laughs> like, you could fit, in, you could probably live inside the skull, quite frankly. Yeah. It's big. Like, the dragon would have been something like 25 feet by 25 feet, right? Wow. So, yeah. Square. The big boy. Yeah, just a giant square. Um, <laughs> two There's D, a cube. oddly. He's a big cube. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a big it's a big dragon. Also, the queen always referred to it as female as well. Mm. You can probably tell by the shape of the skull if anyone knew anything about dragons that it was a female. Not nearly enough to know that. Yeah, um. <laughs> it's it'd be an interesting role, but I doubt anyone would really know about that in this party, given our history with dragons so far in the campaign. But yeah. So, yeah, I would say, I play. We were talking in the room, and well, I thought that the best way, if she ever wanted to even have a chance of rebuilding, or well, I would kind of. Vaguely, point a run. Yeah, like the, the kind of decaying coliseum you're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she ever wanted to like, have a chance of rebuilding her empire, then perhaps she, she might need to meet new contacts. I gave her the opportunity to do so, I guess. <sighs> We sure we have the time and the uh, political clout for this, Captain. Ah, uh, political clout. Well, I made it pretty clear that I will not be introducing up to the people. It's basically on her if she wants to get the the pool that she seeks. We do at least have some knowledge of some of the major players. I... Yes, but do we have the standing to shield ourselves from consequences of any of our action with those major players? Um... We're simply delivering, delivering. Oh. Like, what she does shouldn't affect us. Hopefully. Can never uh -huh. chisel that into this side of the Coliseum just now. <laughs> I can't. I can't say that. Worked out for our deliveries, Captain. <laughs> oh, flashes back to <laughs> Ivan, a single tear. Bloop. Wow. <laughs> um, I'll uh, interject, I suppose, because I think the captain's having the best 
uh, time making his case. Uh, I I have to say I I do I'm in, I'm inclined to agree that this might be a useful way to keep the queen on good terms if that's if we intend to have some form of relationship going forward, which if she is able to reassert her position presumably we would well, need to I'm considering perhaps my association with the stewards might be valuable I mean, see if we just take a checkpoint here and actually sit and assess literally how connected all of you are like, let's review, and we'll do it in Discord order. You've got the Vesk diplomat slash gal like galactic, uh, or sorry, solar system wide celebrity that is the war hero, Zora, right? Uh, you've then got. Um, also, keep in mind that Zora technically has like the business card of MO, right? As well. Um, I don't know if that's who I would want to go to mind you, but... Just, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, li I'm letting you know your contacts, <laughs> right? Yeah. We move on to Nix5. Nix5 has some very strange connections. So he's got, like, his history on Akaton, but how much use the Queen could use of that, who knows? But then he has his whole weird thing with Alice and Query and the Lore Spire. So there's that angle that Nix5 could pull on. Also, this strange connection with a uh, Grace... In the light of the burning sun, and or in the burning mother, sorry, and also the like the strange visions of like potential pasts, maybe, and um, the connection with the queen herself, it seems, um, as well. Then you've got Lyco, who has connections to the stewards, rightly mentioned, and the bone sages. Um, yeah, remember Tectolanus made contact with you in a weird way. Um, mm -hmm. And also some uh, underground figures, probably, uh, in, the, in the galaxy. Oh yeah, definitely, right? In also, like, just in general, Shakos as well, right? Let's not forget bad yeah. Shakos. Um, old Man Guns, if he's important. out there. If he's still with us. <laughs> God, 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 he's God. still with us. <laughs> he will be. I love the idea oh, of introducing the Drow Queen. This, this one, to an arms dealer, is the first thing you do, considering the Drow were known as arms dealers in this galaxy beforehand because of the last Drow Queen. Um, that's funny. <laughs> uh, and then you've got like Zig has all the connections, like the Radiant Supreme, and then Grace and the Eggs and the Vaults and right and like the mind swapping with like Ed, well, his connection with Edgar as well. Um, right, all of you are connected to Hamani as well. So like galactically, mm. I'm just gonna go galactically. You are pretty connected because we need to include the Viscarium in that, so it is galactically. Um, because they're in the next solar system over. So, yeah. You do actually have a lot to offer if you wanted to. Just to kind of review the absolute bullshit of the last 42 sessions. <laughs> <laughs> we could... I mean, we could use that to help her get established as far as we can. And then and obviously this is out character. This is sort of what I was saying to... Um, to Cat last section. And at that point, right? Kind of up to them how they react to her. Obviously, that could cause a problem, as I understand what Nix is saying, if someone goes, Ah! The Drow Queen! Terrible crimes! Must arrest! But this this is not that Drow Queen. I think anyone who's in the know about that would probably recognise this isn't the same person. But then there, there comes the question of, how is this a Drow Queen then, right? Well, that would be for her to prove, surely. <laughs> and I'm sure she can some persuasive <laughs> you know, arguments. <laughs> And possibly, um, possibly she'll have like uh, um, artifacts or you know heirlooms and what have you that will be mm -hmm. evidentiary. Mm -hmm. yeah. evidentiary. What are your three security questions? What was your mm -hmm. mother's maiden name? What was your what favorite dog? Country? Was your mother first street on? Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, sorry. Uncheckpointing back in the game. Boom. Back again, boop, 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 boop. But yeah. Boop, boop, boop. I call them the same as what I was trying to explain. But just awfully. Um. <laughs> Zig, roll perception for me while they're talking. 
Uh, okay. Ba doop. Cool. Yeah. Aren't we rolling? You, Who's rolling? Zink rolling? Like you're, kind of, you're on the steps that lead down into the Colosseum part, maybe. Like, sorry, was you're up against the dragon, sorry, looking at, like into uh -huh. his like, huge yes. fucking nose. You could probably Face call through his nostrils, right? Just not that big. Uh huh. And then, um, like, you turn around and you look past everything back to the steps that you were, obviously, like you came down, as if mm -hmm. somebody had shouted your name. But, like, and that we were, did I actually hear that? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I think. Zig would like look around kind of almost frantically, but then again, just kind of like the wall kind of go through that process of, did I really hear that? Or was that just me in my head? Hmm, maybe. And then kind of shake it off and look back at kind of what the the, the crew are saying. And Yeah, when Zig zones back in, what is everybody saying? What's the... The aristocrats! Um, the aristocrats. <laughs> and that's why it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I suppose I'm probably still making the case in sort of very similar terms to what I was out of character to to Nyx. And perhaps... I love that Nyx still Sorry, during I the process. Like, obviously, I'm going to be confirming this. Uh, it just is well user of talking. It's maybe zoned in out and just started moving bones again and cutting things and occasionally maybe <laughs> tripping in with uh, his opinion his cynicism mm. <laughs> yeah. um, I think also sorry um, Zig is like hyper focused on like like deliberately trying to keep his attention on the, the like the conversation and like really mm. super focusing yeah, in like just, just zoning out like, anything like, else yeah yeah he's like hmm what is um, Nix Five's opinion at the moment? Given like, what's Nix Five's position on the Queen? That's something I want to know as a GM because obviously, if you if Nix Five doesn't know, that's fine. But in general, you have had the more I want to say intimate interactions with her out of everybody, and I include Zig in that as well because obviously. She's playful with the captain to the point of use of a agreement. She respects Lyco because Lyco kind of knows his place and she appreciates that, right? And it's not <laughs> in a it's beneath her, it's just she likes that he knows where he fits in the grand scheme of things and he's been the most straightforward and useful. Uh, she seems to just like Zig, but she spoke specifically to you when you were leaving the vault, being like, you don't recognise me or remember me, do you? Mm -hmm. And obviously you had your weird moment with her tree. And your flash to the lower spire with the tree and this weird pool that Zig was pulled into. Yeah, I think to that extent, Nix is kind of stuck in a position of, I guess, generally suspicious of Drow mm -hmm. and the politics that they bring wow. with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I, think it's valid, I guess, yeah. Drow just. Uh, I think it's almost a reaction, though, of how Drow generally respond to androids. Yeah. Um, they don't have the best working relationship. And there is the probably, desk. given the arms dealings from, like, Aposti and such, like, mm -hmm. I imagine there is perhaps labor forces maybe being exchanged as part of this, right? Yeah. Let's not use the S to the lavery word, but, yeah. Yeah. Ah, slavery for sure. Oh, yeah, so I, th I think that and the general relationship they've got with the industry that has a poor history with androids. Yeah, he's kind of sceptical of anyone who wants to come in and be the new queen. Yeah, I um, the only saving grace in that opinion would be the fact that she refers to you as a warforged because she doesn't understand what an android is. So, yeah. in a sense, there is like a there, fresh... Would you understand the significance uh -huh, of that? Yeah, right. Um, that's no, super interesting, yeah. Um, but then add in the kind of the, oh, you don't recognize me, that sort of stuff. Um, I think that adds another layer of discomfort for him. Mm -hmm. um, that at, given everything else that's going on and the death of SK that he wants to get around to dealing with and whatnot, yeah. he almost just doesn't want to deal with her. Yeah, it's um, like, can this be someone else's problem while I deal with my problems? Yeah. Yeah. Can I have the easy to solve things I want to deal with? Yeah, give me hey, a thing to a, fix or break, please. Yeah. Maybe in a past life I worked for the drow who you know, are crappy yeah. to my people. It's like no, I'm. 
And that's a I'm big thing to unpack as well, right? Because it's like, what if next four was a douche, right? Or yeah. next three. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, I actually don't know what the past me has done. So Yeah. So he's kind of always got this uh yeah, this the potential of this shadow self sitting back there. Mm-hmm. Um not to get too psychoanalytical about it. Mm-hmm. But uh um yeah, so I think he's it, <laughs> Strange, it's probably strange for Nick to be avoidant about something mm-hmm. um, instead of just straight up blunt. Um, yeah, how noticeable but, would that be then for the others? Then, like, would Lyco or Zora notice the fact that? Yeah, you're can I roll? Yeah, like, sense motive would they one? need to yeah. roll? Are you being specifically or deliberately avoidant, or is this like a passive thing where you're not even aware of how much you're actively avoiding? Is it just you're going back into your familiar programming of I must, I must keep busy, and you're not? providing the information you normally would into a, a discussion of this weight, right? Yeah, I think it, I think it's more the latter. I don't think it's any deliberate deception on his part. This is just something that he's, you know, it's hit a nerve. And I think that that's fine, because I think, aware is there. for me, I wouldn't even say that Lyco or Zora would need to notice. I think you would be expecting Nyx to have interjected by now, many times, or have highlighted a more reasonable course of action, or a simpler course of action, uh, or a bomb. For example, so maybe that is both simple and reasonable. Yeah, so I think I wouldn't. You don't need to roll on that. I think if you if you think you would have noticed by this point in the conversation that Nick actually isn't volunteering as much as he normally would because he's always happy to be like, here is my opinion, and this affects me because I'm part of the crew moving forward. And there's none of that. There's just him busying himself with the bones. Um, Zig zoned out, obviously. So, yeah, you just kind of noticed that, like, <laughs> I think. Okay. Uh, is he hesitant? But... Is there a reason to be jubilant? I don't know. I would suggest there might be some middle ground between the two. I'm just not entirely sure what was, you know, where the victory is here. Is there a real perception for me? <laughs> Okie dokie. And you guys can carry on. Cool. Can I roll perception on Zig? Because he has been acting weird. Yeah, you totally can. Let's say it's a 30. Right, what am I look- Actually, no, just- let's say it's a 25 because Zig. No, it's a 30 because Zig's weird anyway. <laughs> okay, perception it is. Perception on the boil. There you go. <laughs> Get that! <laughs> <laughs> um, go for it. That was actually a good roll as well. Yeah. I don't just always no, like, get great. The reason is, I never tell you difficulties. And I feel like it's some, sometimes more exciting to know what you're up against before you roll. So yeah. I might be varying it up a bit like that. Um. But oh, it can be. I think for be. things, I think for things like that, mm-hmm. where it's like, you yeah. know, obviously, Colin's going to know what's going through Zig's mind anyway, um, and where Lyco picks it up is quite more interesting yeah. if he he knows he's going to feel or not. <laughs> but yeah, like um, Zig, as I said, you hear your name again, but louder. And it's coming from like the entrance into this room entirely. Obviously there might be multiple entrances in this room, but you know it comes from like where you entered the room. Yeah, yeah. Um is 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 this kind of like it's like it couldn't possibly like he wouldn't possibly be able to brush it off now as in it's like that's actually happened in his in his mind anyway. Yeah, like it's it's <coughs> however Zig wants to react to it, you hear your name. It's not like you think you hear your name, like I mentioned last time. You hear yeah, yeah. it. And it's very much like a. Almost like someone's calling out for you. And a zig. Ex- like, expecting okay. why, why are you taking so long, you know? Um, I think in, at first, zig would kind of just stare intensely at the, at the entrance. Yeah, and I think, like, just cinematically to kind of help you out with it, the, the scene setting you're kind of maybe zoned into like the giant piece of like rib that maybe Nyx is working on and Nyx has stopped uh-huh. with the burner in his hand turning to discuss obviously with Zora and uh, Lyco and 
all of a sudden that the camera does like that zoom into your face and then the sound almost gets sucked out um, uh-huh. and it's just the, everything goes mute and then you just hear zig and then all the noise like rushes back in as you like perk up and look around mm-hmm. and i think i think the the actual like real life noise is from like the crew and stuff feels kind of extra loud and annoying mm-hmm at that point, because he's really trying to focus on like either rehearing it or seeing something over. And at from this where point, it came the from. camera would shift focus from you, and it would zoom into the background, where obviously you'd see Lyco noticing, like you like looking around and looking back over your shoulder and up at the steps and stuff, and being. A Is bit he focused out. enough that he wouldn't notice me approaching him? I'd say Zig's probably distracted I, enough. I, but, I, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I will just suddenly be beside him kneeling down looking him right in the eye and then I'll sort of put my hands in his shoulders and say Zig I think Zig would like just jump out of skin <laughs> at that like he's like super in- intensely focused on the on the wall you just kind of <laughs> jump back Colin, you, can complete your secret goal. Jumping room. <laughs> you can complete your secret goal you've got his silky skin <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, and he would do that thing where he would like slap the hand away and jump back like really hard, um, and just kind of stare at Lyco for a second, not not saying anything, kind of confused for you know maybe like a, a good moment. I think like he would just be sitting in a sort of like one knee up, arm draped over, it, sort of relaxed crouch. You were you were distracted by something. Um. Yeah, I am. Um, uh, I need. Hmm. Excuse me a moment, and then he would just kind of scurry towards the <laughs> <laughs> the the entrance. <laughs> no, fair enough. <laughs> now, the weirdest thing for like was the excuse me a moment like lucidity <laughs> of Zig, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. just run away. So no. you run back up um, to the like. The, the higher levels of the Coliseum and then like back to the, like towards the door. Yeah, towards to basically towards where he heard the sound. Um, and I think I think like I don't think Zig would have ever said excuse me for a moment. Aha, uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> in, like in real life, just just for 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 anyone who would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's very much a like a, a shock. I think he would have said that quite dozily as well. Um, mm. kind of absentmindedly. Yeah, almost um, automatic. Like, oh, excuse me for a moment. Like, yeah. yes, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's so, like you're all head off. Um, how does the conversation continue between you three in this uh, moment of what the fuck are we doing now? <laughs> sort of slowly got up and watched him as he goes by. Mm-hmm. And how is it you're leaving? Because I think in my head it's almost the hand wringing, kind of half walking one direction, stopping, turning towards the other direction, like not really sure how far you want to go. It's ambling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I think that's the only way I could describe it. Um, yeah, just just wanders off. Not particularly way. fast. I think alternating between being on all fours and standing up and um, yeah. So like you can definitely tell something spooked him, right? Like I think that's a, that is not a shock to anyone right now. Is that something spooked Zig? But how much of that is Zig? Right? Has he mind linked with the dragon bones? Nobody knows, right? Because it's Zig. So. Yeah, and then I think we just stick with you three in the conversation. Um, so after he says he doesn't understand the, um, the goal, like, mm-hmm. I feel like um, we need as many allies as we can get and for what is coming ahead. Um, or one, one would be good. Yeah, one ally, actually, yeah. What well, well, yeah. <laughs> <And what laughs> exactly is coming ahead? Yeah, what was that, sorry? And what exactly is coming ahead? Um, Zora pushes the images of God Emperor Zora out of his head and uh, answers <laughs> the question. What? God, I mean, answer. yes. That's almost a constant in our line of work. <laughs> But this could be a big one. This time, proper war. 
And Wait. which side are we on? Uh, um... That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, eyeballs, but... Uh... Um, well... Currently, I'm trying to stop it. I, I, uh, I think we should perhaps figure out exactly what form this war is going to take before we start picking sides. We, uh, we can't really even claim to fully understand some of the, uh, factions. If Urgalas can be said to be a faction. Uh, if 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 we uh, if we step back, try not to get involved. Things are going to happen anyway. We've already been dragged in, and frankly, at this point, anything that gets us from A to B more swiftly and with less danger, and I think she does have the capacity to do that. Well, I see that as a win in of itself. And then there's the almost certain war with the Vesk starting back up if we don't deal with them, I guess. So we're going to kill whoever is in the Vesk that's going to. that we need to to prevent a war. Is that uh, the plan? Hopefully. I would be quite... I don't like having to do it, but... Well... Frankly, I didn't want to work with a Vesk ever again, but... Uh, perhaps I mean, find I'm currently weapon. standing amongst a pile of bones, which I intend to turn into a weapon to kill someone out of what I can only think of as spite. Uh, so, yeah. I'm not really doing things that we like to do, Captain. I think... We have reason to take Amani off the board. He's proven himself to be uh, dangerous. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> A thirsty boy. <laughs> While I understand that spite would be a poor reason to hide down a powerful dragon. Uh, I don't know, how about... Uh, justice? You seemed very concerned with the fate of Escape. I wasn't happy to see Furler dead, certainly. She... Hmm, she clearly wasn't our enemy, despite our initial meeting. Vengeance is a perfectly human thing. Yes, I don't tend to go in for human motivations, Captain. Well, um, I'm not exactly the expert, but you seem to have changed recently. Maybe that's affected you. Yes, but I fear I'm no closer to a human than I was before. I think, like, on that note as well, I think, like, you've been working away during this conversation, and I think you... that hits a nerve very specifically in the sense that you miss a beat with the the break you're trying to make on one of the bones that you're breaking off from the ribs. Mm. And, like, there's almost, like, tree sap is the best thing I can think of to describe this. And you notice it just, like, running down your hand. And then, like, obviously that you just notice that off the kind of, you know, the comments the captain makes to you that almost it's the equivalent of like breaking a tooth, right? Out of like tensing up your teeth during a conversation. Mm -hmm. So you notice that like you this bone's cracked open and this like white stuff's pouring over your hand and you obviously turn back to respond to the captain. Perhaps there is some justice in taking a money out, but I don't know. I 
I just hope that we can come by some friends, some allies that had the moral purpose that Escade seemed to. And I am simply dubious that uh, Drow Monarch or any one of that ilk is going to somehow help us in achieving some great system-wide justice against the uh, Vesk incursion. Whatever it is we happen to be going to war this week. It's <laughs> valid. <laughs> I did ask when we were about to get rid if we about to delete an monster list. I did, I did pose the question. <laughs> She's given us little reason to think she's a monster. That's fair. Perhaps my frustration is less with the general state of affairs. I think we're losing somebody there, so... Uh, I said perhaps the frustration is less with her or the general state of affairs. There we go. Things have been... difficult. Uh, snowball comes to mind. Well, if we are at war, I'm not convinced we're on the winning side at the moment. Uh, well, the system seems to be kind of falling apart. Um. Oh. 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 That's, um, sorry. Uh, Zig. Uh, I think we should check on. I think we. He walks off. <laughs> he right. walks off like mid thought. I think we should check in on, on, on Zig. So I think, yeah, so we'll checkpoint there, right? We'll click back a couple of minutes in conversation to the part where Zig wandered off. And Zig, you head up towards the entranceway. Um, you still hear them, like, talking back and forth and such. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you do? Um, I feel like Zig keeps walking and. If like nothing happens, I think it gets to the point where he's kind of forgotten why he's walking off, mm -hmm. or half forgotten. It's kind of like a, a distant like yeah. thought at the back of his mind, and he'd, he's he'd he'd start like like when kind you walk of... into the kitchen, you're like, why did I come in here? Yeah, and then so you just kind of carry on hoping that like he would either um come up with some something that he feels like he's supposed to do something or um. Either that or he's going to start just, like, his mind's going to start to wander again um, on, like, the, the halls and how they used to be in the past. And... Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, I think you get there. You kind of forget really why you're there. You have a think about it, and you're staring about, and then, yeah, like, it is that almost, wait, why am I actually here? What's the, like, it's almost like a kind of moment of clarity again. Um that you get and then yeah as you said you start to think back about the place and you know the walls etc and like down here is a lot different to up upstairs it's almost like upstairs was like the proper carved palace and downstairs was pretty much just where they hollowed out space right <laughs> to have a a palace jammed in underneath as well right more space uh -huh. in the space so not as a not as gracefully made shall we say but yeah, do you want to roll perception for me? Or again, mysticism. Sure. Let's try mysticism this time. See what happens. Yeah, you um, you extend your mystical senses and you can almost feel some kind of, I don't know, otherworldly thing, right? Like, I don't mean person, I mean like energies. As if they're like wrapping around you, but like in a really wispy, smoky kind of way. If like sentient smoke was like playful, like a pet, and it was interested in you, it's slowly mm. just like winding around you. And like as you move, it obviously dissipates and breaks, but it like slowly reforms playfully and like slowly like wisps around your arms and around your neck and down your leg. And you know, 
it just it's almost like as I said, if you're underwater and it was like a fish floating around you, right? That type of yeah. Idea. And you kind of notice um, this really abstractly, though, in the sense that you wouldn't be able to just like stare at it and look at it. This is you actually like closing your eyes and feeling it and knowing it's there, almost from the mm-hmm. trails of it. I think initially he'd like just kind of accept it as if it was always there. Mm-hmm. Um, and just so you know, like he would like kind of move, like as, as you know, like a bit like maybe like brush past his shoulder, his shoulder would like go back with it following the same motion. Um, just as he's walking with his kind of like eyes kind of closed and staying it. And as it went on, he'd be kind of coming more to it and thinking, like just a bit more weirded out, mm-hmm. um, and then more weirded out that he was so comfortable with it like a second ago, um, and then he would just kind of stand still and kind of open his eyes and just sort of stare out into the whatever's in front of him and sit yeah. there and just try and you... gather his thoughts a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so like you open your eyes, you can like try and gather your thoughts again, and then. Yeah, maybe like as you like turn to like almost focus on their voices again. They aren't talking anymore, and you hear Zig coming from upstairs. Even though it sounds like it's just upstairs, even though you know just upstairs is an hour away. Uh huh. But it sounds really close. Yeah, it sounds like it's just a yeah, flight of stairs I... away, right? One singular, simple flight of stairs. Yeah, I think. I think. At that, he would like run towards it. Yeah. Not kind. Of, I think not. I don't think even he kind of understands why he did does. He just does. Mm-hmm. It does. Just does. Because he does. It does do. It does do. Do do that. Do do bad. Do bad. Does 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 does. Yeah. So he just like like on like on all fours, just like running up the stairs. Yeah. So, yeah, you, like, start running up the stairs towards this, you know, new new kind of noise that you've been hearing. Um, Yeah, so Lyco and the rest, like, is everybody following Lyco when he just wanders off? Or, like, is Zora staying to try and, like, make your case to to next five? Um... Do you remember Lyco just abruptly goes, I'm going to say good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) just like... um... Just it does that like. What the Yeah, maybe you've just noticed that he's, he's like, yeah, Zig's not been here. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, same question, right? Are you gonna stay here and talk to Nick? Or are you gonna I don't. Know, I, I, I don't know what. Just depends I mean, on how like, much you trust Lyco to go solve that problem. I mean, you should. <laughs> I mean, I, I what I do. Yeah. Um, good. 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 I don't know. I don't really feel like. I don't. I mean, that's probably as. Feel free to think out loud. Like, there's no like, no bad thoughts here. I mean, I don't really feel like there's like. But yeah. What was to talk about in that specific subject other than gone running circles over and over again like with each other well, that's just nobody. it just depends if so. you feel like Nyx has your back with this whole plan because I mean you're right to get into some really dangerous shit if you just don't do stuff right um I mean Nyx is pretty much raised a very good point why <laughs> right it's like why are we taking all this extra risk why are we trying to kill a dragon that doesn't seem to give a fuck about us like don't we have other problems to deal with like maybe getting back to Alice. Yeah. Why are we trying to kill a dragon that's going to pay us? <laughs> yeah, right. Busy <laughs> though. Yeah, right. <laughs> I guess like so he, he would kind of just sigh, um, like almost defeated. Like it'd be a kind of defeated sigh. Like because he knows how much shit they're in. Like, like there's the. You hiding it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> 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 such so, a, so I hear. Such a broad statement. Um, 
it would just it would just get like a broad sign. It's like in the end, the way I see it is she might turn out to be an ally, and if not, then we're kind of fucked anyway, aren't we? I believe in space. It's called a uh, brick. <laughs> yeah, so like, does Nix take that on board? Do you even reply or? What's going As to I say that, though, I kind of just go like and just sit down on like a rock and just kind of ponder. Considering one of the bones, that like one of the ribs or something, is broken off. Yeah, know? yeah. Because there's not so really humble. rocks around. It's like it's a very like it's a coliseum floor in the sense of. That's quite well maintained. It's only the dragon bones that are lying in there, and whatever Nix's equipment is. Mm -hmm. Do I care next? Yeah. So if I'm understanding correct, your argument is we're at rock bottom and it can't get worse. I'd kind of like. And <laughs> you look around. Snuggle. <laughs> I'd kind of like go. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I would kind of just like snuggle a bit of that, like, you know, like a, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and a green. Sort of, it's more like a grunt than a snigger. Well, I can hardly disagree with you there. Now, whatever the plan, are we going to get to a workshop where we can turn this into something useful? Mm, I was hoping that the, the Queen might be able to help us with that, but if not, we were hoping to. She, she uh, said she could get us to Akaton. I, I would nod. We also came about with the. There's also the option of perhaps getting in touch with the ship from here as well. Like, Castroville's quite. I mean, I can't imagine it'd be very difficult to find a, a comm here to be able to get to the ship. It's whether or not we'd be able to do it without risk from here. I don't imagine that's something the Queen can do. Probably not. That's unfortunately not to put more on your load, but that's probably more your expertise. I did believe that was coming, Captain, yes. <laughs> uh, you did make your guy the, the, the do-it-all. <laughs> <laughs> back is going to be so sore from carrying this game. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I need to not make a technophobe. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> seems to be a running gag. Uh, <laughs> I would kind of snigger. <laughs> no rest for the wicked, wicked day. No for me. No rest for the winged. <laughs> I think how cool you could be with wings. Hey, I, I resent that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying here. <laughs> Who are you talking to, Captain? <laughs> um... Did Lyco manage to get a connection outside then? Um, did they mention that he got a connection or not? Yeah, what did Lyco tell uh, the captain? I told him that we'd, I'd been checking like the comms and I'd mm -hmm. been able to get information like on our whereabouts, etc. So. Oh yeah, yeah, he said he was on like an island, a remote island. Mm -hmm. um, he says he's been checking the comms. He's found that we're on a remote island somewhere. Castorville. Okay. So far. So I might be able to access the ship. Communicate with it. Oh. So if you can access the infosphere, we should be able to get communications through to Alice, should we not? I would not. Just when you need to control the ship. To understand these things. I don't know if the your new ship is set up for remote piloting. Um, it's pretty high tech. I assume. In either case, was... Alice is probably still more pilot than myself. So. God, that is a questionable statement, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine she made her own improvements to the ship when you were gone. <laughs> I trust her. It just spray painted the word. I am the, the ship. <laughs> um, shall I go and try and get a lock on? We preferring a less risky approach, Captain. Um, I 
I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think how risky it would be to contact the ship. I mean, we're basically leaving, right? That's what Demigesh wanted, right? So, if <laughs> MD was monitoring communications for keywords, right, you'd flag up. That's it. That's the risk. To okay, who is right, really up so... to you, because let's face it, who might be looking for you? Uh, well, other than... Other than Demogesh. Demogesh and, and maybe even Matva and the stewards Matva. and then also like... Um, Emma O is probably still Emma alive because let's, let's face like, it, she's Emma, looking, I, I, like... <laughs> so remember that list of people you know? Them? Uh, I everybody. Mm. Um, if I mean, Himari I don't feel like easily listening on old radios and shit. Imagine that. that. I it was like, probably just my find God, this radio's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I'm trying to think of the actual techno people that would be like listening on their own radios. I don't think of Addy's one of them. Hmm. confirmed not techno person. Yep. Love it. He's uh, made like. I feel like he would just show up if he felt like it, right? Like. Yeah. That's, it's he kind of seems like that so type far. of guy. Right. Right. Yeah. He already he's, knows where we are. He's a dragon, he's magic. Mm -hmm. Uh. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm sure that it's can send a fucking message with it, like saying, "Hi guys, it's Zora here." <laughs> <laughs> fucking. Oh, there's definitely a role that's possible, a hundred percent. Yeah, you could definitely try and mask a lot of it if you wanted. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, the quicker we get the ship, this the better, right? I guess I would say. I mean, what could go wrong, right? Leaving it out there for longer. Mm. Uh, I mean, that could become know. sentient. It's as all but in a potentially hostile planet. I don't, don't like planet this. Could <laughs> planet could become sentient. Planet could become sentient. I don't even sentient. know if that's the worst thing that could happen at this point, right? No, so, probably not. So many other things. The ship things. becomes a planet. Yeah. Planet ship. That'd be awesome, actually. That would be awesome. <laughs> 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 To Quick, quote uh, AFI, do you like do you like what I'm becoming? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like what you're becoming. I don't know what you are anymore. So uh, yeah, what's the uh, the conclusion to that scene? Then? Does like yeah yeah I would I would kind of just uh, well oh uh, yeah yes. yeah so I think Nick whips out the communications pad and just heads off to go and get connection to the infrastructure. And uh, start tapping away. Right, so we'll skip back to Lyco heading up the stairs, and you get to the entranceway, and like you're looking around, and like you obviously can't see Zig. Mm. I would begin, sort of quizzically shouting his name. Yeah, I am. Zig, Zig, can you roll a will save for me? Uh, I can. Oh no, shit. <laughs> he in fact cannot. Oh no, <laughs> no. Hold on, give me a second. Ah, uh, fuck. I just closed. You're doing well. <laughs> I closed my web browser. I'm sorry. Stall! Uh, okay, uh, Lyco, you get there, okay. there's like a strange sense of, maybe like a scent in the air that you get when you kind of like you sniff at it a bit, catches your okay. nostrils. It's a bit horrible and you smell the fear of a young Isoki. Okay, that's specific. Um, I, I will speed oh, up, like, sort of heading... I don't know, I wouldn't really know where to go. Uh, the, up, pretty much I up, follow the scent? Right? <laughs> yeah. It's mostly just be up for a while, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, the, obviously, if you came across, like, an open door on the way up, you could definitely investigate yeah. that, but, like, that would involve somebody having opened that on the way up, right? Um, I, I will just start to... It opens all the doors as he... ...really take up a pace as I'm, I'm coming up up the stair, sort of. Maybe not saying his name as often, mm -hmm. like you know, conserving my breath a little bit, and uh, and sort of occasionally giving it a zig, you know, rather than going zig, all the way up the stairs, zig. <laughs> Yeah, not that. It's just uh, every now and then we cut back to Lyco. Yeah, <laughs> we'll away. save. There we go. Oh, cool. um, yeah, you um, you head up and you, you still are in the lingering thought of hearing that voice saying "Zig," you know, like uh -huh. beckoning you upstairs. You have no no like knowledge of like 
like we're trying to shoot up the stairs at you. Okay. So I'm just I'm, that's that's all I that's all I know. Yeah. So like I guess are you heading up? Like you get to I mean if you're gonna keep going, you can spend your hour getting all the way to the top. I think. Yeah, you said you were going pretty fast, right? Yeah, it was. It was just. You gotta go fast. Um, mm-hmm. If you're not fast, you're last. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think he's like. I think he's become very single-minded at this point, and he's just focused on on that and just toofing it upstairs. Yeah. Or pawing it. As yeah. Right. Yeah. So you scuttle all the way upstairs, and um, yeah, I think. Yeah, like there's no obviously no obvious signs of Zig beyond that like that weird smell that you caught. Um that's about it, really. <laughs> like okay. that's it, you've shouted obviously and there's been no response and Yeah, like Yeah, this is concerning. Uh, a bit, yeah. And I think like maybe by that point, like if you start to like head up, as you say, to it and you're like you're shouting after Zig. Like I think by the time Nix gets to the stairwell, you can probably hear Lyco shouting after Zig. But you know Lyco's clearly away up by that point because he's been running. Um, so Nix Five, you're fully aware that uh, Lyco seems to just be calling after Zig in a what well, sounds like a concern tone, I assume, right? Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. So I think I've got looking. See, like, Michael, you have your calm one, right? You've got your calm on you, so yes, yeah. Like, like it may be a curse to you that you could probably just calm him because you're probably within enough rate, like penetration range of the signal to get straight to his calm from where you are. I mean, as if Nick would. Sick. I was gonna say, I mean, if Nix would calm, like, oh, right. yeah, like a, you're looking, f- looking for Zig. Um, I, I sort of marginally slowing down. You know, it's, it's still at a bit of a almost a jog pace, power walking really, uh, mm-hmm. just so as my attention isn't divided while I'm running. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's uh, he's gone up the the stairs pretty far. I've I've not not got a not got a beat on him yet, and he's not slightly out of breath, not shouting back. It's uh, yeah, I'm uh. And continuing up, I don't. I do. If unless you say anything to that, he'll just click off. Yeah, no, he wouldn't say anything to that. But I think he'd be concerned and head in that direction. Yep, cool. You start heading up. Um, mm. Zara, what are you up to? You staying downstairs with the bones? Just sat on your your rib cage? Nah, <laughs> nah. As soon as like I hear that, but you haven't heard any of that. Oh, no, come. Yeah. No, he, he called. He called Lyco because he heard Lyco. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I would follow. Remember, anyway, you're down in the belly of the Coliseum anyway. Um, I would, I would, I would follow anyway because I heard the the Lyco thing. So. Yeah, like the Lyco's weird concern about Zig in general. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can head up as well. So I'm sure there was a reason why Nick stormed off after a calm and two people gone missing now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so you head. I think we'll obviously start with the top of the queue. So, Zig, you get to the top of the stairs and you're maybe a bit dizzy by the time you get to the top. Okay. Like almost the kind of lightheadedness that catches you. You... Mm. You look around, and can you roll perception? I'm sure I can. Bidoof. Cool. And has the staircases are all in perfect order again. Like they're all pristine. They're not broken. Okay. okay. Uh, you hear the voice again, and it's coming from like the random room. Like the one, like the random corridor you you went down. So oh yeah, like, yeah. Up that kind of back end of the the raised up section. Uh, so you hear again, Zig. I think is the voice distinctly like. Would I be able to tell if it was like a, a like what kind of person it was, or like a particular race sounding, or a particular um, sex, or a particular thingy? Would I? 
or would it just be like a sort of ambiguous voice? Um, roll, roll mysticism. I'll answer okay, that okay. maybe. Well, name maybe. Yeah, like I could be male, could be female. It could be like an effeminate male voice. It could be a manly female voice. You don't. It's it's difficult to kind of suss out because you now when you wake up from a dream and the more you try and push yourself to remember yes it's, the, it's, it just kind yeah. of slips away and yeah, yeah yeah so every time you're trying to focus on it it's as if you trying to suss it out is making it harder to hold on to yeah so kind of like in the moment he's like oh I know exactly what that is and then it disappears like almost instantly yeah and then like letting that go of, of that focus is what seems to be your ability to focus on it right yeah um, I think it would definitely slow down the pace, but like continue on towards the well down the the sort of corridor hallway caveway. Um, yeah, like the kind of the, the weird nausea inducing room before. Yes, because um, it's like down that way. I am um, so yeah. You got up there. You run away that way. I am. Um, yeah, and you head down the corridor. The corridor is like you could swear it was brand new. Like it smells new. It also, you can hear things in the, like the distance. Like so, as you walk down the corridor, like you maybe stop and you turn back and you can hear like people, right? Like it's busy. Mm -hmm. Like, but it doesn't weird you out because it feels like it's meant to have people, right? Yes. Like this um, place is supposed to be busy and fully staffed, and you know there's meant to be lots of chatter and noise about the place. Yes. Um, I think what he would kind of go back to sort of ambling pace and kind of do the the reverse of what he did when he was leaving. Have his hand, you know, against the wall, like feeling the grooves and the the, the well, I guess the sort of um, structure of the wall, and just keep walking down with his just hand trailing behind him. Mm -hmm. um, the same wall that he had previously, um, but. Whether or not it was a conscious decision, whatever, but walk obviously the opposite direction towards the where he was, um, and kind of just so submitting himself to. By that, like, do you mean you're heading towards the the room you dipped your feet in, or are you heading back yes, towards the, the, the voices you hear? Dip to, the room he dipped his feet in. Yeah, so you like you carry on like, down the, the, the hallway. So yeah, like the, the room. The voices get like muted again as you go further into this corridor. I am as it's quite windy and long and. Uh, well, but it's very like it's all lit again with those crystals that are in the wall. Um, that seem to like where the wall was broken before. It seemed like it all broken, as if the wall had covered these crystals when they weren't needed, and obviously seems to like move to reveal them when they are required. Um, so as you're like walking down, these crystals are like appearing in the walls. Um, is that sort of like a like it like physically moves, or it sort of kind of fades out and the light fades in, sort of. I don't know if Zig would be able to tell the difference. Okay. Because you're only noticing them when they're there, right? So. And then is it is it like kind of that dream state where something is there and then you just accept that it's there? Yeah, and you don't need to know why it um, got there. Yeah, and then like, yeah, yeah. you turn around and you notice that there's an absence of it behind you because it's not needed there, right? So. Yeah, and then you head off obviously further down the, the corridor. Um, going back to next five. Are you just, are you speedily trying to get up the stairs towards Lag, or are you just climbing normally? Um, I think it's pretty fast. I, mean, I imagine he probably strides up quite quickly with his big power armor. I was going to say, yeah, you're pretty fast. Um, as you're running, um, you notice that you, like, spray the wall with, like, white paste. Can not see where it's coming from? Yeah, your arm. I looked down at my arm. Yeah, and it's the arm that obviously had the white kind of like sap on it. And like your entire arm's covered in it, and then you look down, both your hands are covered in it. Is it coming from me? Yeah, it seems to be pouring just from you. And it seems to be like, it almost is clinging like down like your arm like towards your elbow and it's like dripping. Um, mm -hmm. You see it start to like, where it splashed the wall. Um, if you kind of stopped near there, like it slowly just starts to like coat the wall and like expand over it towards you. 
Nej, jeg kom ikke lidt. <laughs> Do I see this? No, you're a bit oh, behind them oh. just now. Um, remember this? You see that can't be good allowed. This curves round. <laughs> remember this staircase that's huge um, to get to the top. Um, Lyco, you get to the top, right? Into the big reception hall. Um, Receptarium. What do you do? Look around for Zig. Yeah, you don't see Zig. You just see the. Do I see any traces that would lead me to head in a particular direction as in others? Um, I don't know. Let me think. Uh... Can I roll? Can yeah, I roll? give me some kind of tracking roll. Emma would be pleased. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> in this system, there isn't tracking. What so I'm going to have to just <laughs> so far, something four, else, four, which is four, so four, appro appropriate. For this I, system, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sur survival? We could Yeah, no, I'll say. that. Yeah, like, try and track him down with survival, yeah. Oh, okay. I think I've done pretty well. Uh, yeah, like, weirdly, you've made the check with a 30, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yay. It's not even the crit, because as, as you recall from our wonderful experiment, the great experiment before, um, but yeah, you look down and you can kind of see, like, what looks like the freshest step, like, footprints, if you will, from a our smallest Oki friend, who, fun enough, has the most distinct, probably, yeah. uh, footprints from everyone. Um, but, obviously, you've walked around the palace a bit, and these seem to be the the most on top, shall we say. Um, so, yeah, you kind of spot them, and you see them heading away up to like a, a part of the like palace you've not explored. Put it that way. Cool. I will follow. Yeah, and you, you head kind of down that way. Uh, going back to next 5... Um, yes. Do you stay put? Do you move on? Do you see what like like? But that I mean, do you stay put to see what this white stuff's doing to you, or are you just like running on? Because it's. Uh, I want to start looking over my body to see where it is. It just exuding forth from me. Yeah, like it would be as if it was coming from your hands, but you know, like your hands aren't like cut or anything, right? But then you look down, and obviously you've covered like parts of your side are covered in it now and it seems to be coming from there pouring down like your leg and it just seems to be like as if somebody poured like a tub of emulsion over you Oops. like white emulsion right. paint and um, like the wall seems to be like coating like quite a bit of the the wall it's crawling over the ceiling it's coating the stairs beneath you and you're coming through my armor uh, you can't tell I will step out of my armor yep uh, as you do that, the um, yeah, like it's almost like it's like stuck to you as you like go to step out. It's almost like the kind of the strands of liquid are all, like hanging from you, a bit symbiote-esque from Marvel, if you wish. Um, yep. And you step out, and like it slowly just coats all the armor, and then like yeah, like you have essentially covered this place in white emulsion paint after about five minutes. Like, you're slowly mm. not being able to see anything that isn't white. I'm just going to shout and stop. And then we cut to Zora. Zora, you hear stop being shouted by Nix5 just ahead. Like, round, like, maybe like a couple of seconds running up the stairs. Uh, I will run faster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, you start gunning it up the stairs. Um, yeah. How long do you run for? Uh, a while. Yeah, so you start running uh, and you get to the top of the stairs after the, your, your while of running. Uh, yeah, probably like, like, you, did, like you, you did not see Nix5 at all. Oh, you did not see any white splashes of paint anywhere. Call them. There's nobody to call them. Nobody connect. at all. Like it doesn't connect to Nix5. You go to, to Com Nix5, okay. it just says resolution unavailable. I would kind of like huff and like <sighs> and I would uh, Com Lyco. Trying to remember the name. Could get any yeah, Lyco, your Com goes. Um, and I you're, you're probably like you're probably at the 
you've maybe just like a couple of steps into the weird tunnel, like of like the corridors that uh, you think Ziggs wandered down. Captain. Uh, as I would obviously let me a breath, but I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> as next came by. No, I, I'm still up ahead. Yeah, maybe, you, have... maybe, maybe you take a couple of steps back into the big chamber hall, and you can you're up on the second level. Look, and you can like just spot the captain down at the entrance way to like the dungeons. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And there's you have that yeah. shot of you just can't hear each other at this distance except through comms. I can only see you, captain. I'm looking down the chamber. He's not come this way. He, uh, I just heard him scream stop and he did it seem like he was far but I charged forward and I don't see him He's... that's concerning Captain I'm following what I believe are the recent, most recent footprints left by Zig down this path we haven't explored or at least I haven't I don't know if you got the chance uh, have I? Not been that way? I don't think you went no, that way no you've not been down that way only Zig was that way I would shoot him, but that actually can't I don't think we should split up any further. And you can see him from where you are. It's alright, like you can see like right across the like it's almost diagonal opposite you. Um on like the raised up part where the broken staircases go to. Um right. so yeah. I would kinda of nod and start walking towards him. Yeah. Um going back to Zig. So Zig you God, the fucking timelines in this game, right? Um, <laughs> Zig, you head further down to that room where you like you kind of almost like just paddled with your feet. When yeah. You get there. Um, doesn't have the the broken light coming in from the the cracks mm-hmm. in the ceiling anymore. The room's just like a strange, just again like a circular room where there's like the steps down, which make that kind of pooled area that you're in before. Um. It's all like again that white stone or marble look that everything's had. Um uh-huh. the actual bottom ring of like the steps down into the circle is all like different almost quartz like crystal, it looks like on the floor. It's almost like when you look at it the light catches it differently. Um Okay. Um very kinda of rainbow esque kind of quartz. And yeah, like you're in that room. Uh you don't hear the voice anymore. You don't hear voices from behind you. You just know that there's like a weird pulsing from the the room. Okay. What do you do? I think you would just keep stepping forward quite slowly till he's right in the center. As you step in, you feel the cold water. Okay. Do you keep going in? Uh, no, yeah, he takes another step. Yep, and then like you go in to the point where like it's probably probably up to your neck, to be honest, given the the height of you and the the yeah. however many steps down this this room has, because I say it was like a, quite a big yeah. circular room. You're I in... think he's got his head kind of like pointing up as well, you know, like yeah, but you're clearly maybe... not in water, right? Like, yeah, there, there is he's, no. He's water. kind of like got his eyes closed, looking up, sort of, um, and just kind of sort of embracing this feeling of yeah it is, it is like it there's no cold to it you just know there's the clinginess of water right like it's yeah like an afterthought of the effect like it's not like you walk into cold water and you know oh god this is freezing cold water um like you did probably when you dipped your toes earlier and mm-hmm. yeah you just have this moment of kind of just standing in the middle of it and then again you hear the voice zig it's coming from underneath the war, even though there is none. Uh, I think still with his eyes closed, he would sit down so that he's kind of submerged. When you close in... your eyes, you can still see everything. Oh, okay. Well, you'd still keep his eyes closed. I need to kind of like sit down cross legged so that he would be submerged in the water, not water that's there yeah. and not there. I mean, we have this like weird image of like all of like the the looser parts of your clothing maybe like drift as if it was underwater. Um, yeah, yeah. And you're there, Lyco, and Zora. Yes. You, 
Yeah. So, like, are you waiting Zora catching up to you, or do you just head in after Zig? I wait. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, Zora, you catch up to him. Yeah. Don't like this. <laughs> yeah, we, uh... We seem to have a situation on hand. I, uh... I think we should be cautious, eh? I, th I think... Well... It's too early to make any definitive calls, but I feel like Nyx didn't just, you know, find a hidden doorway or something, and I I worry that something lured Zig away, considering how distracted he appeared in his sudden leaving. So... First things first, I say we, we continue looking for Zig, because at least we have a path to follow. How about not? In that case, gestures down the, the way I was about to head. Mm -hmm, yeah. And uh, and turns to go back down it. Cool. So, yeah. Or to go down it, rather. Yeah, use head down, use activate, obviously, whatever lighting devices you require, because it gets a bit dark. Um, unless you just go with your, your visions and your equipment. So. Uh, I, I use my, my special eyes. Yeah. And then, I'll use my Yeah, puts on your shades that they can see inside. Um, nice. Yeah, and you head down the corridor, it just looks again like the rest of the palace, right? Like, long since repaired. Um, or long since in need of repair. And, yeah, you... Um, I think, Lanko, you see it first, because I think you were down the corridor first, and it's not a particularly wide corridor. Um, you see Zig quite a way away down a corridor. Okay. Stepping into like murky water. That's concerning. And I'll then, shout out for him. And like in that sense that by the time you focused your eyes to spot Zig, because your eyes have to adjust from the dark corridor to the light room with like the shafts of light coming into it, you see Zig just sit like just submerge himself in this pool of water. And you just see like bubbles coming up. And yeah, then you shout obviously Zig. Yeah, um, and I speed up as I, I start to yeah. approach him at you know, a bit of a jog again. Uh, maybe. Did you say anything to Captain behind you? Or? I trust him to follow my yeah. lead, despite so, like, the yeah, fact he's the captain. Zora, you just see like Cap run, essentially. I don't follow, I'm sure I follow. It seems like Lycra's got this, I'm away to find the Queen, goodbye. <laughs> Wait to negotiate new terms. Um, <laughs> right, back to Nyx 5. So, next five, you look around, your armor is completely, like, almost undiscernible from the rest of the white environment by this point. You look mm -hmm. around, stairs seem to be gone, right? Uh, the walls, again, if they're there, you can't perceive them, you just see white everywhere. Um, what do you do? Because you've shouted, like, stop. And it hasn't echoed or anything, it hasn't, like, it's just that word has been released into this place. Uh, I will try to calm the captain. Yep. Uh, you look for your equipment. Uh, you don't have it. Uh, I will. Where's my character sheet gone? Even that's gone. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Imagine just removed your access to it. <laughs> <I> <laughs> Only give you access to one note, and it's just a blank white page. <laughs> I use self destructs. Ah, of course. Uh, weirdly, uh -huh. uh, the manufacturer never had that installed. Damn. Uh, then I use like the tech a... magic. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> Is he bee stock and he didn't come with it? Like, so go, magic here, baby. You go to like, activate your kind of like your mysticism, right? And you look down, and you can see all the white veins appear over you through this like white like coating you seem to be in and it seems to like part the liquid over you um with this white light beaming through almost like like i don't know divine cuts you could say i am um, all over your body and you're just kind of glowing and we get this view for the first time as the audience back at nyx who's just this weird white mannequin looking thing with all these like again divine cuts all over him beaming out um the magic is being fed somewhere, but it isn't doing what you want it to do. But something is clearly eating it. Consuming it. But, 
I'm not getting a sense of any pain or anything. No, nothing like that. It's um, You can feel you pushing magic outward externally. You know you're applying magical pressure. But then you also know it's going somewhere, right? Like if you're trying to push a heavy block, you know you're pushing it. But, but does it feel like it's moving? Insofar as you don't know how far you have to move it, right? Weird descriptions, I know. But so you don't have a frame of reference. Yeah, you just know that it's not stopping this feeding, this consuming of your power. Like if you're willing to give it, it seems willing to receive it. Uh, I will stop giving. Okay. Yep. And then like all the divine cuts, as I described them before, which is just your circuitry that's the white. Mm -hmm. It used to be green. It's now white. That all just slowly, like the liquid, just seeps back together, and you kind of become this strange, almost formless mannequin. And you still got your like your fingers and stuff, and you can still see and perceive yourself. Um, but yeah, I think uh, at this point you you finally start to perceive something else in this place with you, and mm -hmm. it's it's a tree. <laughs> and Fucking we go back trees. to Zig. And the uh, tree. Quickly. Zig. Yes. Um, the voice says to you, you're finally where you need to be. And as it says that, it goes from this strange, almost um, maternal vibe that's kind of uh -huh. pulled you here to yeah. almost sinister and distant. Yes, and I think. Oh, before oh, no. before oh, yeah. you even react, like you start to drown. Yep, because you've not been breathing, and you, or you've been breathing in water. I should say just casually. Yes, and maybe as you start to kind of like come to, you like look down, and you're in this strange, again pristine-looking, weird non-pool of water, and from the floor, this shape and figure appears and if I can just put a wonderful picture oh my god <laughs> that comes out of the water the room's oh like god, the room's right. strange lighting wraps around the figure's form so like out of the crystal like the main white part of the body comes up and the hands lunge out for you as the shadows form the hair over the shoulders and like the definition of the shape and it grabs you and just pulls you like okay. you run up to Zig, who's uh -huh. like started like being pulled into the water, the bubbles, and then there's like thrashing by the time you get to the edge of the pool. Um, you reach in to go grab him and pull him out, I assume. Yes. Uh, there's nothing in the pool. How far will that, Zig? Yeah, so. <laughs> Next five. Uh, you are in this room, this space, if you will. A room's a probably a weird word to say. You start to like make out the the shapes of a tree. The tree is very familiar to you. Um, mm -hmm. It's the tree from the lore spire room. It's the yep. tree from. I knew it would be. It's the tree from like the drow queen's prison. And um, yeah, there's somebody sitting, just kind of like with their back up against the tree at the other side of it. I go around to see who it is. And you see they're eating an apple. Query. Yep. And he just takes like a bite of the apple, one solid bite, and offers it to you, winks, and then we hear like coughing and spluttering and panic as zig falls into this white space with you from the pool behind you. And <laughs> falls out of a pool. Typical thing. Like literally like vo volleyed out of it and lands like kinda next to you and you look down and you realise obviously there's a path beneath you, you've got him under the tree behind you is a zig. And I think we end there with him just winking at you, holding out this apple. So we end the session there. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no. I'm going to go have a moment to myself so I can calm down. Uh, what would you like to call this? Uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, M is a good idea. Um, 
Und das ist nicht Abend. <lacht> rock Bottom? <lacht> I did like Rock Bottom, to be honest. Oh, rock Bottom's pretty good. Um, well, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. The people's elbow. <laughs> the people's elbow. <laughs> people's eyebrow. Oh dear, redecorating. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. What the fuck just happened? Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Do I want to name this first? Yeah. Um, what else we got? Right, so Zora, any suggestions for a name? Um, try to think. I can't think of it. Um, I do like Rock Bottom, um, but that's because it's the best one that's been said so far. Um, I'm trying to think what else we got, I guess. Branches is also a good option, I guess. Um, pulling our resources. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm not going to lie, I do like pulling our resources. Um, Not again. It's so valid for so many sessions. Um, <laughs> uh, um. What about the, the price of knowledge? Bit of Apple symbology there. I'm voting for Rock Bottom. Yeah. Rock Bottom. <laughs> yeah, like it. it seems, seems yeah. like it's a winner. Yep. Good. That's fantastic. Good, good. We have a name for the session. Uh, right, let us review goals. Obviously. Fines is fine. Oh, because I closed the thing earlier, I don't have goals up. Ah. So, uh, Zora. Did that the final on the brief recur? It's not complete. Yeah, it's, it's not yet. No, not yet. No. Almost though, right? Almost. You just need to do that part where you get back to the final hour and debrief the crew. Uh, hopefully, uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, next five. We're definitely okay. working on that, right? Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, just need a bit more time harvesting, like the final. Excuse me, the final, like the maximum amount you could realistically take, right? Like you could. Uh. There's a bit more time required for that, and then that's you good to go. Um, like cool. Uh, I might. Might sideline this one for mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I'm not hundred percent certain because I think obviously there's sort of an emergent situation that needs to deal dealing with. Yeah, right. Like where the fuck did Zig go in the murky mm -hmm. pool? Yeah. Well, where did both of them go? And I, I have to assume that he's sort of probably already thinking, well, that's connected because you know he has mentioned they've both gone. I don't think this is. So I think I think he's got to be assuming whatever just did happen in front of his eyes is probably similar to what Or maybe this was the Drow Queen's plan to separate you all and take you out one by one and then you were sure of this to be the Xenomorph Queen. I mean, she would have had better opportunities already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think, like, yeah, there, there, there's obviously an attack. And not, I'm not just saying that because I'm paranoid. Um, <laughs> It'd be justified if sure. you were, though, yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Yeah, we'll leave yours as is for now, at least. You obviously yeah, can shelf it I'll think you about... Yeah. You say that. I mean, I mean, or I'll see. <laughs> it's because you say you'll think about it. We we know you, Lyco. We know the lies of Lyco. <laughs> um, Zig. Don't drown. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, technically, you're no longer in the water, right? How do I know that's me? Right? <laughs> that could just be any Zig. We don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> was it the mini but Zig? It might be where Zig's supposed to be, but is it when Zig's supposed to be? Let's be. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh. Don't follow when strange voices Zig? to water. They <laughs> 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 oh, called him a right. I'm going to know the answer. True that. True that. God's sakes. Manners. Manners. Yeah, I think. You're happy with your goals as is, then? You want to change them for um, your current yeah. circumstances? Um, I might. If I, I'm, I think I, I'm happy with it for now, but I think I might think on it. Well, we'll talk about it at the start of the next session, might, anyway. Um, it might change. It might change next session. We don't know. Yeah, we'll given what the fuck's going on. Uh, good. So goals are done for now. Uh, yeah. So 
Let's just start with Zora. Um, I enjoyed the, the brief, like, sort of, where the fuck are we at chat. That was, mm -hmm. that was fun. Uh, it's, it's hard gone, because where the fuck are we at, lads? Where <laughs> are we at? I agree. Where's uh, your head at? <laughs> Where's your head at? Where's your zig at? <laughs> where is Wilson at? Where's Where's our Nick at? at? Come on. Like, <laughs> where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Anyway, I'm not going to go into the likes. Uh, <laughs> we don't win that, so... Uh, no, we don't win I, that. I, um, I don't. I'm lying. Yet. <laughs> Yeah. I also enjoyed spooky fucking goings on right now. I, I, I don't enjoy it. I enjoy it, don't enjoy it. Um, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I think. And I I mean, the you enjoying not yeah. enjoying it is probably a good compliment, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. You're taking my what you want. <laughs> I think, this is my favorite. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... And I, I do like the way that Nix is playing his apprehension to the draw. It's, it's good reasons. It's really, it's really good, reasons. good reasons. Yeah, yeah I agree. Very yeah, good. I think I'll, I'll leave this stage to them. Yeah. Uh, Nix5, you were segued in nicely. Yep. Well, I enjoyed my uh, ranting at the captain. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. It's kind of yeah, venting yeah. Nix's growing frustrations. And it does yeah. make sense, as Zora, as Zora did say there, like, it totally makes sense based on like, the way you explained your like, inner motivations mm -hmm. for all that. Like, Of course you're going to have apprehensions about that, given the strange histories of uh, well, Nix, right? Yep. So, yeah. It is a weird perspective to be in charge of as the five pseudo perspectives, right? <laughs> is it six? Yeah. Is it five? Would we don't know? Yeah, um, the inherently philosophical nature of the androids, right? <laughs> um, is he a bitch? Is he a lover? Is he? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, is he a mother? <laughs> yeah. He's a uh, what was it there? Um, uh, thoroughly enjoyed six, kind of growing. Uh, I don't know what is annoyance, just yeah, like, general. I guess like disillusionment maybe from the crew. Yeah, yeah, and I feel bad being on the outside knowing that it's happening. Uh huh. Because it's like, <laughs> sorry, little space buddy. <laughs> yeah. But there's also absolutely no way that Nix would uh, notice. Uh huh. And be Nick's, focused on Nick's that right now. Nix is dealing with a lot of shit just now, though, for himself. Oh, yeah. Right? Like I'm the wasp. I'm yeah. probably my character's the same. It's the worst person for noticing something like that. It's all right, cool. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Medgar. Yep. Uh, yeah. Has um, no idea. Oblivious. Right down to the Absolutely. part where it's like, what? And you're like, ah, Medkit. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think that's like that's kind of really helping though. It's kind of pushing Zig more towards where like the whole um confront the captain goal. Mm. It's gonna get to a point where he's just gonna be like, "Right, hold the fuck on, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sick of this shit." You know. I'm looking forward to that moment. I'm sick of these goddamn timelines I'm and this sick motherfucking. Of, I'm RP. sick of all this shit. <laughs> I hope the worst part of it. Blowing me up <laughs> like a little monkey. Did you see that you're so so? <laughs> 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 oh fuck! Are you so keen? I was so sick of being tired. I was so tired of being sick. Uh, Let's so try and see if it would happen. Um, I, the worst part about it as well is I'm probably gonna like Abuzar is probably gonna just laugh his tits off and it's like like it's like just goes ape shit <laughs> for the reasons yeah. he's got ape shit for really, is why you would probably really start like laughing. The idea where it's that you know when like uh, someone going through puberty gets really upset. Mm -hmm. That was the one I was getting wrong. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, but you'll be glowing I, uh, instead of the high pitched voice. It's just like you yeah, start so to like glow brighter, sunlight. Brighter. Yeah. <laughs> and if he was level nine, he'd be flying as well. So that would. I mean, if he's managed to complete some goals, you might be level nine, right? Or maybe well, get some it. of his goals complete soon, maybe. Nah, nah. Oh, she's there. I think. 
Um, I mean, it's been a long one, to be honest. It's <laughs> changed ages ago, but oh well. Yeah. yeah. It's also good to see Query coming up. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, <laughs> the next session. Strange Man Under an Apple Tree, right? Yes. That's, oh, that's a great session out. title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it yeah. feels kind of like a callback to me. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Strange that, eh? Imagine that somehow all of this nonsense being relevant somehow. Uh, yeah, that never happened. No, 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 not on my watch. Um, <laughs> yeah, the um, I love the ability to explore these fucked up people so well because you guys put so much work into like sharing the little bits of here's why my guy would do this because of this thing I said on one session like twenty sessions ago, and. It does make total sense, right? You have layered these characters enough to the point where, yeah, they are like fully like th- three dimensional, um, and in Zig's case, fourth and the fifth dimensional. Um, and obviously, Nix is trying to push into that territory. He's looking to become Nix six D. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, been interesting. Anything else you want to add, Alex? Uh, no, I think that covered it all. Uh, it's good. We'll go with Zig next. Um, it's right. Okay, so recently I've been rereading um, *Magician*, right? Um, by Raymond E. Weist, which is mm-hmm. a great book if anyone hasn't read it. And I, I got haven't. like literally got to the point. Right, okay, there's a point. Right, there's this guy called Thomas, or if you're listening to the audio audio book, I think the guy says Thomas. Yeah, I, I I read Thomas. Yeah, it's something yeah. Nice, Um, so uh, Thomas. Or Thomas, or whatever. Um, he he gets this this armor of Ash and Sugar, and he gets this. Um, occasionally, just spaces out into these dreams, and they're basically linked in this like way. Thomas has these visions, essentially, of Ash and Sugar's life, but just accepts it as it, it doesn't kind of acknowledge it while it's happening. Um, and I kind of got that mad vibe. <laughs> there mm. just because i was and i was like do you know what? i am just gonna roll with this as if it was this sort of dream state and that sort of thing so um i don't know like how influenced i was by that but yeah but that's what happens right like uh, things you're doing or what, like even just like from like a writing point of view like you can't help but be influenced by stuff or like that you recently encountered it does seep into your brain yeah um also i just really like the fact that Zig, for me, I read this obviously this way, was you went, you didn't really fight any of the strange impulses this session and it felt more like you were being called to them and you went with yes. it because the the distance you're feeling with the crew at the moment. And to me that was the interesting, like, they're pushing you away but this thing, this weird other entity thing was like calling you. Also to a degree there was a lot of playfulness to it, right? Like the strange weird ethereal fish thing and whatnot um, mm-hmm. that you were sensing. Um, like, almost like visions of like the old palace as well, right? Or the new palace, I guess. Yeah. That's probably the new the palace. Old palace. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking that. Well, I'm not liking the disconnect with the crew, but I'm really liking it. Wow, in a bitch. Sort of, um, wow. Uh, in a narrative point of view, it's just it's just really interesting, and it's kind of like ah, oh, it's yeah. I just really want to see where it goes. Yeah. Plus, this is pretty much like the coming of age arc for Zig. I think this particular part we're in just now, which is the at what point does he, as we said earlier, does he snap and go, no, he's we're going to listen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, that's um. It's definitely like one of the hard parts about playing Zig. Mm. Is kind of drawing that line in your head of like, is this when Zig would do this, or is this just you wanting to ah uh-huh. progress faster than? Yeah, like, am I trying to artificially engineer this, or is this natural? And that's the thing as a GM, you hit all the time. That is the same. Like you, yeah. Does it depends on your writing style, but for me, I put a lot of. Like chess pieces on the board, and then it's like, right, cool. Whose move should it be? What is the most sensible yes. move to make? And then you go, but I have this cool character, and I want to do this thing with them. And you think that doesn't make sense to do that yet, because that's just for like the the wow factor. And you're like, right, okay, maybe I'll wait. I am, or sometimes you just cut a limo in half. I don't know, right? Yes, it just um, it varies. 
but yeah, on on that regard, it's definitely been the most like challenging <laughs> character mm. I've ever. It's like, been great to see though. I'm not gonna lie, it's been brilliant to see um, you like <laughs> expose us all to Zig. Um, yeah, um, and I, I'm also really loving the extreme gulf between Nix and Zig, um, <laughs> as like opposed to like from the start. Where it was like you know super close, and now it's like it's like you know we've got, he's got this disconnect from the crew, and then there's another island way off on the other side of the world where Nix is in Zig's mind, and he's like I've I've lost that, and I don't know how to get it back. No, he's not. He's right there. What I love though, as well, is you're literally on a fucking remote island right now with <laughs> Nix as well, um, <laughs> metaphysically and physically, right? Um, yes. which I do enjoy. That's been good. I actually can't wait to see how that plays out because is it the growing up moment for Zig where he goes, actually, I Nix and me aren't as close anymore, and that I need to be okay mm-hmm. with that. That's the adult moment, or is it the no? I need to get back with Nix in the sense of I need to have back what I want back. Um, yes, like we had a fun relationship, and it, it, I want it back, as opposed to I don't need to give up. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that's super interesting, yeah, and I think too. it's. I think it's going to be really hard to decide whether or not it's going to be yep yeah, Zig kind of gets through this all ah yes everything's now sort of back to normality I'm a bit more mature or anything or if Zig just goes like a complete opposite end of the spectrum as in right okay I'm now super serious like nothing matters mm-hmm. death machine you know yeah like cuz I mean, could you are go forced either to be way reckoned with that way like if if Zig went dark side, as it were, yeah, like the burnt sun would be a terrifying character to see, quite frankly. Um, yeah. So Hashtag it'll be pointing it here. It'll be really interesting, and it's one of those things where it's like, like I, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's my character. Like I've I've no idea where he's gonna go. Um, it's just all gonna be depend on the circumstance and how things play out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's your Um. No, I I love I love the I love how um Lyco just went. Um, wait, hang on. Uh, should we look for wait? Mm? And then just disappear. It's good. Yeah, so and I'm loving. I'm loving. That. I'll just wander off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm loving the the captain's and Nix's obliviousness to 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 Zig's kind of like. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, like I was noticing Zig's discomfort and like weirdness more so than his normally weirdness. Whereas the captain and like Nick's kind of need to have it out with the what what is our actual like what are we even wanting to achieve here, right? What is the next yeah. step? We seem to be bouncing between people. Why? And it's been good because mm-hmm. Zora's kind of like, okay, we'll do this, and we'll do that because it's something I can do, and then Nick is like, why are we doing it though? And it's I love that from a character point of view, seeing the separation between everyone. It's almost like you're fragmenting. Yeah. Oh, I, think, I see what you did there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well oh. Of eternity! It's again kind of going to that, like um, Didn't you at the start you would have said, you know, oh, Nick would have noticed this because he obviously spends most right. time zigging yeah. and stuff, but it's and like, oh, maybe the captain would have noticed because obviously Zig's medkit, he's mm-hmm. the Thingy and Colin's kind of the uh, Michael's the the oh I'm not sure how to deal with this child rat thing I'll just scratch his head and move on um, to completely the opposite where Michael's the only one who's kind of yeah, noticing, noticing these it, yeah. things. so it's he he may be patronizing but he's extremely observant so <laughs> yeah, you know so ups I'm, and downs. I'm, I'm definitely I'm definitely enjoying the kind of flip mm-hmm. of the 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 crew dynamic in the yeah. Yeah, if you had portraits of everyone and you had your friendship tokens on, like, you know, the captain <laughs> and uh, obviously Nick's five, and then all of a sudden you just sweep it all over to Lyco. It's like, maybe maybe I need this just now. Yeah. Um, a good... Yeah, Lyco, <laughs> speaking of. Indeed. Uh, yeah, so that that was a bit of a rah session <laughs> where things went weird. So we go, uh, I will add, just before I say anything else, that I have, in fact, temporarily put in a new goal. Um, by the time we get back to the next week, 
week, <laughs> I may have changed my mind on this, but at the moment, I've thrown in, get the lads back together. Because <laughs> that's the most pressing issue, and it's the one that's most in his mind mm -hmm. uh, at present. So, yeah, that is Lyco's immediate personal goal. Um, following that, it'd probably be fine. The Queen, yada yada. Yeah. What, what I enjoyed about this session was probably the weird freak out of Zig. I think, like, obviously that sort of tied in quite neatly to the idea of something luring him away in a very literal sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was also the idea before that of him sort of drifting away, of him feeling underappreciated or not sure of his place. And I think the biggest problem that he has is that uh, the entire crew are extremely weird, but with the exception of Lyco, they're generally weird in a way that makes them very poor at expressing their thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas Lyco's pretty alright at just saying things as he thinks them. What were you going to say in defence there, Zara? Please hit me with your <laughs> best shot. <laughs> totally forthcoming individual. Uh -huh. <laughs> you have a tendency to snigger at people a lot for one thing. Um, I just have this flashback of you just giant walking in. Grenade. Like, yeah, but while walking through the remnants of a fucking inferno grenade that went off, burning yeah. half of the staff he took out to rescue his ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, also, yeah, that was bad. <laughs> so uh, sad, man. Like, people skills for a Vesk, maybe. Hey, he is the foremost <laughs> Vesk diplomat. Yeah, people skills for a Vesk. You also have like the highest charisma in the party, do you know? Like you are actually the most yeah. charismatic person in the entire party. And next, I don't, but we don't really do the um, charisma rules. <laughs> despite being a cyborg, is honestly like That's if you right, yeah. put you put him in a phone call with someone and put Alice also in the line, you would guess he was a fucking AI because his delivery, his manner, <laughs> everything about him is impenetrable. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you just think it's, Alice was probably a bit of an idiot, to be honest. Oh. Yeah, a bit of an idiot, but a charming um, idiot. Yeah. Um, holds up spark. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, like who likes him. Like who likes all of the creatures. There's no one he's doing that he doesn't like. He's, 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 he's not, he's not, you know, he's, he's not, uh, I didn't do it. But he's very aware of the fact that, yeah, these sometimes aren't the right ones to do. Like, that doesn't make him the right one either in a, a sort of grander sense like, and it, it, would he be the one person you would you would go to for, no, no he wouldn't be but of this lot, yeah it's gotta be <laughs> like, um, and add to that the fact that just he, he is sort of like a, a hunter, a tracker in a sense, he's, he's someone who's done that from both sides of the law and you know he sees someone going off, maybe initially he just thinks oh he's frightened he's distracted, he's upset, whatever but after a while, he gets into a frame of mind where he's like, hmm, we're talking about X, Y, Z, we're talking about... They're dwelling in all these bloody things that we don't know and that might want to hurt us. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. It then, t t like, twigs bag to... Zig seemed like something was pulling him. I am now worried. I am going. I, I don't know. Maybe I should have made him go immediately, but I just... I didn't feel it was immediately obvious that it yeah. was, uh, I think, you know, a dangerous situation. I would situation. say the pacing that of that meta, all maybe. worked out perfect, to be honest. Um, in general, for all of the parts that happened, because it let me pace out what I wanted to happen within yeah. the same framework, because Zig was getting to his trippy vision, right? Nyx was getting to his trippy experience, and obviously Zora and Lyco were left being like, the actual fuck, right? Um, Abandoned? Yeah, because like, it just kind of looks like Zig went and drowned himself. Right? To Lyco. Um, I mean, except that I couldn't find anything, which is probably... Yeah, a... but like, it was like the thrashing. <laughs> then you go in and it's like, wait, what? But you definitely just seen Zig like, walk into water and then just go down and sit in water yeah, and bubbles come up. Yeah. Concerning. Then there was the thrashing violent part of it. Yeah. And we all know from the Zig side of that Kind of interaction, some weird spooky woman appears. In yeah, that. yeah, he's 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 in a J horror now. Yeah, right. Uh, a horror. Uh, a jor a um, A jor I'm actually just going for the Oscar vote now. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, um, so so that was good, cool. and and also like 
you sort of you you, you tied him and and not for the first time next together in the the sense of the spiritual stuff mm-hmm. coming together in these two characters. I mean, yeah, they're both mystical, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, potentially also ties somewhat into my backstory in ways that Lyco might not be aware of mm-hmm. because I don't know I don't know how much prior knowledge. Nyx would have, or perhaps previous incarnations of Nyx would have. That is something we discussed, and I kind of felt like I wanted to leave myself in the place of, well, Ico doesn't have a clue, so yeah. I wouldn't have a clue. No, um, I think that's valid as well, because it gives us all scope, I think, to develop what we want if yeah. a moment of And if something is. comes up, it means like not having too much preconception of what it should be, yeah. I think is valuable, because it gives you freedom to kind of make up and your own like, stuff. That's where being comfortable Nyx, with like, the core aspects of your characters like are such a value, because you can then adapt on the fly that way. Like, knowing like that I have a pretty solid, specific backstory hammered out, but it's the broad strokes, because mm-hmm. you've got to be adaptable with the details, because I'm not writing this setting. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Like, um, for me, like having the ability that to overlap these stories like quite nicely for you guys because realistically what can we expect next right the next week on starfinder we have mostly got what the fuck is the white space doing back yeah that was interesting that was cool it was again another quite horror movie moment with mm-hmm. what next went through in the hallway that was definitely because i mean that spooky. started with the skeleton remember so creepy it did yeah bone juice is taking over uh, don't call it bone juice that no, could be missing. i will never call it white bone juice yeah uh, never it call was, it <laughs> it was like a weird tree sap that came out of the bone yeah. <laughs> not someone what you cannot easily dismiss right um, <laughs> um, uh, yes yeah, so th- that was good fun <laughs> weird session definitely a weird one Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a while since mm-hmm. we've had a weird one, so I, f- I figured we would do one. You know, it's been a while. I thanks everybody it's for playing while. as well. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for running. Yes, thank you. Running. Thank really you all for that. being around. And uh, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.